Hey, Susan, thank you for allowing us to record this session and to share with everyone. Here we go. So I'm sharing the screen with you. Here we have CellCore is this, we have this roadmap to health and we're calling it this foundational health approach, right? Yeah. That we have here. And so it's these foundational products that work as what we do and restoring hope and health is who we are. That's the motto of the company. Okay. Yeah. I love it. That's what, right. So that's, a, and so, and it's interesting whether you've been the cell for a while or I've, you know, somebody's brand new, it's, it, they still really don't understand this, the foundation behind cell core, like we're, what we're all about. Right. So, mm -hmm. and with these conversations I've had, I'm finally finding out that a lot of people are using maybe, you know, I call it onesies, twosies, right. They're using a couple of our products here and there and they're not, great because those products like Mito ATP and Biotoxin Binder and you know all these things are absolutely fantastic to add to your clinical practice but where we actually see people making transformational changes not only in their practice but in the health of their patients is when they start really to understand the, the why behind cell core and the roadmap to health and the power of the phases that we call it so yes we see we have this foundation that the company was built on, with, you know, which was behind the story of Todd Watts. And Jay Davison ended up coming along with him a little bit later down the road. But Todd started, he's a chiropractor, and he was, work, he was working with clients. And he was diagnosed himself at the age of 28 with Epstein-Barr virus. And quite interestingly enough, that was the same age I was when I was diagnosed with Epstein-Barr. So, and I can kind of relate with him. And his story is the same to where over the next several decades of his life, just like me, you know, and I got into my 40s, 30s, and 40s and whatnot, that my health really took this downhill dramatic spiral, right, which led to chronic fatigue and joint-related issues, and it was just really debilitating for him. And so it wasn't until he was diagnosed with Lyme disease that, that he really forced him to really look further and, and look deeper into some of the more different products and things because he just found that what he was currently using in practice just were lacking depth. He just didn't have the products and supplements and things and protocols and stuff he was using just didn't have the depth to really address his situation. And so once he found out, he started doing some research and looked into things and came across humic and folic acids, which are, which is these bioactive carbons that when he started to implement those carbons into some of the products and stuff, then that's when his life turned around, not only for himself, but for his you know, patients as well in his clinic. So he got with the scientists and they came up with this formula and, and this is now known as our carbon technology. It's, it's what's incorporated in all our products and that what has really made the turnaround for himself and his, his practice. So, so that's basically the why behind CellCore and how it got started. So we kind of give you some foundation there that, you know, he's just, he just wasn't this guy that just wanted to, you know, create a supplement company and just start selling some products thing, hoping that they would work. You know, he really, did his due diligence and did his research. And he not only he took the science of the product of, of the carbons, but also he did the energetic testing of the products too, to have the combination of both those things to really work, you know, with, with the clients that he was working with. So it's, it has the combination of science and energy testing you know, combined with all those, you know, with, within those products. So, so we have this foundation here with salt core foundational medicine approach to where, this, it's really a precursor to functional medicine. So what, and then what that means is that we're coming in prior to anything patient specific to where we're getting that patient back into uh, homeostasis, you know, that, that baseline, right? So, and what I just I always like to emphasize with maybe somebody who's new to functional medicine or they've had decades worth of work, right? Like much like yourself to where I always want to emphasize that you know, we are classified, like I was saying, like, as a supplement company, but with our carbon technology and stuff, we are definitely not, I don't consider us a supplement company. We're in a category in its own of, of like a detoxification company, I would say, with our carbon technology that sets us apart from other supplements. So that being said, we're not here to replace any current existing product lines or even protocols that you might have. Because I understand that you maybe you've got decades of work behind you, right? And just to kind of think that somebody's going to come in and just replace your product line or your protocols, I think is kind of absurd to think that's going to happen. Yeah, but but why? I, this is why what I told you before, and I won't take too much, is the fact that 
the only reason I'm here is because I never quit learning and I already get fantastic results because I believe like they believe, I just do it differently. But if somebody can take what I already do and get the results I do and I can change that dynamics, then, and they, they've done, whatever they've done, they've done an outstanding job, not by testimonies or just selling supplements. That's why I'm here. It's because they have the clinical and they have all the stuff behind it. So I, I, I'm just, that's why I'm so excited. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that, that you have an open mind because some, some may not. So, and I just like to reassure that fact that we're not here to really come in and step on the toes of that clinician who is really advanced in the work they do. We're just here to really help let those products and protocols that they are using to have better, better efficacy, right? To where we're gonna enhance that program by coming in and, and creating this baseline or this homeostasis to get organ function to work, right? So, and we understand that, you know, they may already have a hormone or digestive or autoimmune protocols that they're using in, you know, already in practice. And they're using things like Zymogen and Standard Process and Premier, Premier Research Labs and all these great products, and they are. So, you know, just Cellcore is here uh, foundationally to detox the body, to enhance the efficacy of those products and protocols. So when they, when you do bring them in, right? So I'm so excited. I can't stand it. <laughs> I love to hear that. So that's, uh, so it's all about clearing the, the body's interference or we call it the white noise, right? Cause, and that has to do with the organ function and, you know, everybody has organs. And so we can treat everybody the same in that aspect because everybody has organs, right? The same organs, you know, we all have you know, kidneys and livers and all these other different things. So, so what we do, what we do, exactly, right? So what we do is we clear out all this white noise to clear the body of parasites, environmental toxins, radiation, heavy metals, molds, and all these things before we can even get into any organ-specific work with a patient, right? So, in fact, we see in our cell core system here that we're getting 85% increase in clinical outcomes when our practitioners in the cell core system just apply this foundational medicine approach with our products before they even address anything specific functionally with that client, right? Or with that patient. So, so you'll ask, okay, so that's fine and dandy. So now how do we do that? What do you mean foundationally? And what does that exactly mean? Like I kind of referred to a little bit about the organs, right? So, you know, the body has these organs, as we all know, they have the tissues and glands, which are basically filtering systems, right? Our kidneys, the liver, the lymph, and even our stomach and intestines, right? They're either absorbing nutrients, breaking them down, you know, or they're either maybe optimizing, trying to optimize mitochondrial function and even cellular energy is happening there, here in all these organs, right? So, and we're addressing this even before we get into anything more patient specific, because all these organs here, right, are either breaking down nutrients for assimilation or they're filtering something, right? Our body is just this big filter. So breaking things down, filtering, and going through that. So us as a company, Cellcore again, foundationally, that's where we come in, cleaning up that white noise and all the debris and garbage that's in the and system. the problem with us, as not me now, but the problem with practitioners is they don't know that, or if they do, they ignore it. They try to symptom treat by fix the organ rather than going to why the organ's dysfunctional. And you have to clear the pathway so that they can, that's why I don't do any other kind of thing until I get that done. So this, that's why this fits for me. Awesome. Yeah, no, I love that. So yeah, I mean, I, and I think we'll see that year after year sometimes. It's like <clears throat> whether, you know, we're chasing after an MTHFR thing, right? A genetic SNP, or they're chasing after Candida, or that now- yeah, or, or, or now it's the ketogenic diet. And, you, know, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, hold on a second. Let's, all those things are good. All those things are true but partial, I call it, to where they have their time and place. But it's like, let's first get this homeostasis, right? So that's what we do here. We, that's what cell They have is. expensive urine, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and it's not even getting into the cell. So that's what we want to try to get to have happen. So I have a couple of analogies here. We have this, we want to try to create this fertile ground, right? So... You can look at this like, you know, you've got this um, organic garden that you want to plant, right? And, you know, and so you have the fruit and vegetables and stuff that you want to grow. You have the seeds, but you just can't take those seeds or even the starters from this year 
and plant them in the midst of all that trash from last year, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to go in and cultivate that ground, clean it all up. So you have this fertile ground. So those plants and seeds have the opportunity to grow and proliferate, right? So that's what we do with cell core is basically that same analogy. And I'll use the same thing here with this house. Look at this house, right? You can't, same thing here. It's like, look, it's got mold on the walls. Things are falling apart. You just can't look at this house and go, maybe you want to have, flip it as a rental or you want to keep it as a dream home, right? Either way, you just can't look at this and go, let's throw some paint on it and let's bring in some carpet and tile and granite and all these things, right? It's not even ready for that. I mean, you can't move into this house. We have to do that prep work. And a lot of times we're going to have to tear things down to the studs, right? They're going to have to take off that drywall. We're going to have to remove you know, all that insulation and everything in the house. So doing that prep work, right? So it's that same type of thing in our bodies to where that's what cell core is coming in doing is they're coming up and cleaning out all that, you know, all that rubbish, all that debris, you know, removing the drywall and, the, and all the stucco and whatever else that might be in there. So that when you do choose individual products or bring in protocols of your own, that they will actually have that opportunity to work, right? So so it's the same thing, like, you know, it's the same thing like with our health. You know, we have to just go in and clear that all stuff out, just like this home. So we do that prep work in, and that's what Cellcore does really well. And by all means, as the company is concerned, we're not saying we're the end all be all as far as all supplements are concerned. I mean, if you feel the need that somebody might need a little bit more liver support, maybe in phase one, phase two detoxification, mm -hmm. by all means, bring that product in. We're not against that. Our job here as CellCore is to come in foundationally, remember, and remove that debris and all that junk. Sure, do we have some nutritive components to our products? Yes, we do. It might not be enough for a specific person, but just know that those carbons that are in there that are doing the work to allow that stuff that you are bringing in to really have the efficacy it should. So, so that's where that's based on as far as our products are concerned. So, so foundationally, we're just getting that work done, doing that prep work. So that brings us to the, the next screen here, which is our roadmap to health. So with our roadmap to health, we have these five phases. And each phase has its own design task. And it's you know, kind of similar to like the five R's or four R approach that you might hear about quite a bit, but yeah. and, and it's just a little bit different aspect of how we're doing it foundationally to or in the detoxification process. So this roadmap to health, and I don't know if you've seen this um, five phases yet, but you know. I have. I I I actually printed off your thing that oh. you sent me, so I'm looking at what you're showing me. Oh, awesome! Good. I have it right here. Good. Okay. Yeah, and I think I left you something. Yep. Yeah, perfect. So, and this roadmap to health, right, is based on mitochondrial function, ATP production, right? So it's very critical throughout this whole phase. So you know we're coming in here, you know, getting that mitochondrial turned on. So that when we go through these distinct five phases, we then afterwards, if we do need to do something more functional medicine, then you'll have that opportunity to do so. So this is basically the 30,000 foot overview of what CellCore is all about right now. And so I'll go to the next phase just to kind of give you that distinction about we're doing foundational work before even functional medicine comes in. So I just want to lay that groundwork down. So that, so that was five phases now work right along with this drainage funnel. So, and I'll get into this a little bit more, but I want to use this kind of this uh, analogy here to where it has a lot to do with detoxification, right? This drainage funnel to where maybe yourself or I, I think I've been there once myself, or maybe somebody, you know, went through a detox program, right? Or they thought it was a detox program and they had these drinks, there's these smoothies and they were doing these, taking these drinks and they were doing them and they were at first for the first day or so they were doing okay. Then all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, they just fatigue and brain fog and the body started shutting down and they said, oh my God, they had to take off work and stuff, right? And they go, oh my God, I'll never do this again. It was the worst thing ever. So quite frankly, what was happening there, right? They it wasn't a detox. It was more of a cleanse. And that's actually something maybe you might want to do as a maintenance thing, but definitely not for somebody starting out. Like maybe they were told you've got some toxicity and they go, oh my gosh, yeah, let's, let me do this detox. And while, what they were doing with that detox is they were working way up here in the organs and tissues, way up top here in the funnel to where, you know, they were just circulating all those toxins around in the body. And because that drainage pathway wasn't opened up below, 
for one, it couldn't exit the body. And then secondly, they didn't even have any binders in there to absorb those toxins. And so it was just being, you know, reabsorbed into the body and recirculating around and who knows where it got left. But so quite frankly, if somebody's doing a detox program and they feel horrible, that's uh, one, they could be just going too fast, but secondly, they're doing it wrong, right? So this, this funnel here, it's all about the body's drainage funnel and we start always with the colon, but quite frankly, the colon, as you probably know, is one of the last things to really heal but we have to start there because what? People need to be pooping. And I'll ask somebody, it's like, so are you regular? And they'll go, yeah, I go every Sunday at six o'clock, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, daily, you know? Um, I'll take at least once a day, but I like to see two, maybe even three, which, as we're going through a, a good detox, a good- But to show you the mental thing about that while I'm thinking about it, I had a woman call me, she said, I've got diarrhea, terrible. I said, what does that mean to you? I said, tell me what diarrhea means to you. I'm going three and four times a day, stool movements. I've got diarrhea, I'm gonna get sick. And she hadn't pooped and you know, she was used to going maybe once every two or three days. And so she thought she had diarrhea. Until she was pooping three and four times a day, real oh. stool, full stool. And we got her where she's, but she called, she says, I'm gonna get sick, I'm pooping too much, I've got diarrhea. <laughs> I said, oh my God, people are so, we're just so whacked. Well, they don't know. They're not educated. Yeah. Right? They, they didn't know. I mean, it really wasn't diarrhea. It was just they were <laughs> actually being, being, She was getting healthy. Yeah, being regular now. So, so yeah, so anyway, we, you know, we go up to, we, like phase one, we're addressing the colon, then phase two and phase three, and we go up this funnel, right? Each step of the way. We're not really addressing each step of this funnel immediately all up front, right? So phase one is, uh, phase one is considered uh, the colon, right? Right, yep. Oh, okay, yep. I wanna it, write it, it on here. It, so I it's, have it. Yeah, it's the, um, you know, the drainage, it's the drainage funnel and energy production is what it's called primarily. It's drainage yeah. and energy. But yeah, we're addressing the colon for sure. That's where we start. Okay, cool. Then we just move up that ladder, right, to the liver and bile, you know, and the so skin. What is, what is that one? Is that, I wanna write it on this sheet of paper so I have it. The liver bile is, is that phase two? That liver and bile, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's phase two. Yeah, yeah, and then and there's, the there's- lymph yeah. is three. Right, yeah, as we go around, I think it's like actually three, four. So it was like, there's, there's actually a little bit of comment. It's not really in the same exact synchronization of the phases. It's fairly close though. It's like a combination three or four there with the lymph and all that. So, okay. and, and so, yeah, and then we're addressing the organs and all that. So like and that phase, would be closer phase, to five. Phase, phase four and now phase five is, is still the organs and tissues in the lymph system. So we're still addressing all that. So I really can't oh. say that each of this funnel is specifically okay. designed to each phase. But it is in so an it order. Combines, but yeah. okay. So that's that's the drainage funnel, and just keep this funnel in mind the whole time as we're going through this, because it's always going to come back to that to that funnel and the phases there. So, so that's what um, that's all about there with the with that drainage funnel. I mean, it's really and it's really quite interesting about that drainage funnel too, because I think even myself, I knew intuitively years ago that yeah, people need to be pooping, right? That just made sense. And I understood that, but I really didn't until I saw this funnel and put it on. It's like, yeah, okay. I, it, it just like, oh yeah, it just the light bulb went on kind of thing. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Just nobody ever put it in an order like that yeah. um, to really drive it home. And it's like, yeah, okay. I can kind of see why there would. And so clinically this has been proven, right? So this isn't just something that they just said, oh, let's just write this down and we think this should work on paper. No, clinically these phases and this funnel that drainage whole drainage funnel has been proven clinically. So, you know, for years and years and years. So yeah. it's just not something we just, you know, can't, you know, pull out of the hat. This is one of the reasons why too, with my work, as you said earlier, years ago, the sicker we made people, the better I felt as a practitioner, because I was creating a Herxheimer's response and they were getting sick to get them better. Well, I learned later on in life when I started working with it and really understanding my, my understanding that I was able to take the sickest person that came into my clinic that was violently ill and couldn't do detox. I could take that person and make them better without making them sicker to get them better. 
Yeah. And I learned not to ever put them into a Herxheimer's response, but I had to not having this, I had to work with them every two or three days on the phone and yeah. I baby stepped them. I never, ever, ever put anybody in a Herxheimer's response. And that's been 30 years now. See? And so yeah. that's why I love this because it's the same philosophy it's a little bit different and you've got wonderful products that accelerate that, but you still don't have to put people in that, that dynamics. I've, I've done it. I literally yeah. oh, I know I have too. Right. So I agree with you. So where it's like, when we, I think sometimes at some point in time, we were kind of taught that, oh, well, Herzheimer thing is that's a yeah. normal reaction and to expect it. Right. Yeah. So, wonder so we didn't kill people. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so yeah. And so, I mean, I see it. Even today, to where a lot of times people will say, yeah, I, I was working with this practitioner and I was hurting and they told me that's normal. And it's like, no. well, okay, they might have some a little bit symptoms, but if they're really being buckled over, there's something wrong. You know, that either the funnel, either they're pushing too hard, that funnel's not being addressed right. Yes, um, it something's it going on. It's just recirculating, you know, it's recycling yeah. that garbage yeah. and that's why they get sick. Yeah, yeah. So, yep, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, so this, um, this page here is just basically this 30,000 foot overview here of, of the, of the phases again. And um, we're, we start with phase one with that energy and drainage funnel. I'm going to go into the products and the phases here a bit, but before I do get into that phase one, I want to talk about the carbon technology. So if nothing else, if you take nothing else away from this today, it's going to have to do about our carbon technology and what that's all about. Because if we didn't have this carbon technology, our supplements would be just that another supplement. We would be another Zymogen or premier research labs or, you know, standard process or whatever it might be that you're using, Metagenics, Biotics, all these companies. So we would just be another supplement company, right? So, and if you look at our products on each, on the labels of the product, you'll see on it extracts of humic and fulvic acids. And you'll go, well, that's interesting. It appears, it appears that each product has the same thing, right? And according to the label, that would be true, but it's true, but partial in that each product has its own formula to where it has its extracts of extracts of these specific humic and fulvic acids to where we call them that they have a program directive. And you can think of them as being an intelligent adaptogen and how they are work and what they do. And so that's kind of mind blowing in itself. It's like, wow, I've never really heard that term when we're talking about carbons or a, a, you know, a supplement type of thing like this. You might hear that in like, like some type of an herb, right? And some like type an of adaptogen herb. herb like yeah, a, exactly. Like so, the, yeah, and we do have some herbs in our products. Saying that that's the humic and fulvic acids, right? And part of the carbon technology is doing that. Yep, yep. And so just to go into a little bit about a little bit of science, I'm going to go, I don't want to go too deep into it, but just to, just to clarify with people what humic and fulvics are. Sometimes I don't know. I, you okay. know. I've never oh. worked with them and that's, I've heard, oh, I have, I have in some, um, yeah, but I don't really understand why, but I noticed that they had it in their okay. products and I really wanted to know why. Okay. So, the so, yep, these carbons, right, they're, they're made when billions of beneficial microbes and decompose old plant material are in the presence of oxygen. So they turn into this very nutrient rich dirt, which is turns into this shale type of okay. substance, right? So it's dirt, it's very new, it's just basically it's dirt. That's what it is, it's earth, it's dirt, but it's very nutrient rich. And it contains, that dirt then contains these fulvic and humic acids and these extracts. So, and we didn't learn about these compounds in nutrition or science class. No. Right? but they're essential to our health. And what's interesting about that is that these, they're high energy, right? These fulvic and humics, and they're composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. What else is composed of that? The human body. We're 96% of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The other three, 4% is minerals, right? So minerals are there. So, and with another point about that is mother nature designed these humic and fulvic acids so intricately, right? that they cannot be synthesized by a chemist in the lab. However, what we are able to do, and Jeff, who's our lead scientist with Cellcor and part of the company, he's not going anywhere. He's really valuable to us. He's a great guy. He's able, he's the leading carbon, we call him the, the carbon man, right? He's, this, he's, he's the leading guy in the world when it comes to carbons, the carbon technology and humic and fulvic acids. 
he's just brilliant in this in this research that he does. His son, we call him the atomic the, the atomic man because he's he's on the atomic <laughs> spectrum. So they work so they work together, right? You know, we got the we got the carbon man and the atomic man here working with us. So so it's really and these guys are just phenomenal in the work they do. But what they're able to do since they can't synthesize it in the lab. But what they are able to do is take the extracts of extracts of these fulvic and humix and bring them into each one of our products to, uh, you know, to have this program directive or in a certain formulation to get to have this assigned task that we want to carry out, um, whether it's going into, you know, the liver or it's going into the stomach, wherever it's that we're, what we're having to do for a simulation or we're going into a cell for the mitochondria whatever we're trying to do, minerals, all these things, it's basically, you know, programming them to carry out this assigned directive, right? And again, this adaptogen. And so they work with pH. So um, a lot of the, the lot of it, it's all pH doing with voltage. So people always think of, well, okay, you know, pH, right? So they always think of acid and alkaline. So the higher you go up the scale in alkaline, the less voltage you actually have. So that's less energy. So a lot of our products are acidic. We have more voltage, higher energy. So, and it's like, this is a concept for some people to where that gets into this whole debate about alkaline, alkaline water, 9.5. Yeah. That that drives me nuts. Right. I have more people that are sick from 9.5 water. Yeah. Yeah. And I so, take them off of it. So it's interesting too, to like, it's like, well, so then explain to me then, you know, what, how, Okay, I can understand that maybe they might get the concept that, okay, I understand alkaline water, you bring it in the body, it, that might not be good because the stomach is acidic, and that's so the stomach is going to try to rip that alkaline apart, right? So, so, but then they say, well, explain to me then how is it that I do so well when I work with people on an alkaline diet, right? Why is that? So, and quite frankly, I mean, the way I understand it is pretty much it's because of those foods, they're so nutrient rich, right, and dense. They're, you know, they got the, the, the phytonutrients, right, from the sun. They're, they're, just, not new, they're just really nutrient dense. So that's really, it's not necessarily the alkalinity of the food. It's, the, it's the, how, how nutrient dense that food is and how it's grown, right? So it's not like a processed food. So it's just they're really working with the, how nutrient dense that, that food but is. But that's different than, and again, when you're saying that, when they're doing that, our, it, food is a wonderful way to do that. But when you're doing pH 9.5 water 24 hours a day, every day of your life, you're destroying the body's ability long term for it to do anything appropriately for your body. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's what I have found. And But I'm just saying that what you're saying is... They get results because of the food, but where right. they destroy that good work is drinking alkaline 9.5 water every day, all day long right. with their food. They're yeah. destroying what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And quite frankly, you can't change the pH of the blood anyway. You know, so, no. yeah. So, yeah, if you try, if you did, you'd die. <laughs> right. So, so, so what's neat about these, the pH and how it's done, I'll get into that in just, in just a sec here. I but love this because I'm telling my, that's yeah. such a good point. So, so the binders, so the binders, let me just highlight the binders here a minute and I'll get a little bit more into the pH, but the, the binders can be taken with other supplements and food. So that right there is just like, wow, you're telling me that I don't have to take these binders an hour away from a food or other supplement, you know? And so it's like, no, you don't need to. And so right there, you're going like, well, my patient compliance is just going to increase. That's, that's huge. That's a, if nothing else that, that right to me, that was one of the big selling points right there is like, I can take this binder with my food and not only can I take it with the food, but it won't deplete the body of nutrients like an activated charcoal or clay or diatomaceous earth or whatever other binders, out there and I think even I think there might even be some zeolites that might could deplete the body of nutrients not all of them but I think there's some of them yes, yes there yeah are. so not only will these binders not deplete the body of nutrients but they also because of the humic and fulvix they're very nutrient rich they will actually provide nutrients to the body right so it's you know it's able to go in and grab a toxin in the body come back in and supply any nutritive work 
stuff that needs there, but also will do restorative and reparative work behind it. So it's not like on other different types of binders where they're just going in, grabbing onto the toxin, ripping it out and getting it out of the body. And that's even questionable too, because our binders, a lot of them are, have a covalent bond. Yeah, we do covalent and some ionic bonds. Most part, most of the binders are covalent bonds. So what that means is that this, this covalent bond is like a bear hug, right? And an ionic bond is like a handhold to, an, to a molecule to where that, that molecule can then be easily displaced and knocked off and dropped off somewhere else in the body to where that covalent bond has a high energy enough to make sure it goes in the cell, comes out, and you know, gets it out of the body. So, um, it, so it has this high energy to bind, restore, and direct. So what's interesting, too, about the pH, and this is where I said I wanted to get to here in just a minute, is about – so each product – is has an assigned pH and there can even be different pHs within the product interestingly enough and I it's a bit of more of a proprietary um, process that he has that Jeff has that he doesn't want to divulge because it is you know proprietary um, but he just knows that and we'll often say to it's like when the people will ask well what do you mean by protect what do you mean by protect so by protect we mean is that because normally when you take a supplement into the you take it orally, it goes into the stomach, it go, hits the stomach, hits that stomach acid, and what does that acid try to do? Rip it apart, right? That's what acids do. I mean, it's, it's going in and they rip it apart because usually a lot of those supplements are going to be more on the alkaline side to start with. Um, they're not meeting the body's pH. So what our products are do, they are they're have the proper pH to where now it's protecting that herb when it goes into the body to make sure that it's going to have the assigned directive that we were attending intended it to do. So that's where the intelligent like adaptogen comes into where it's almost, you know, pleomorphic in a way to where it's, it's being able to recognize and decide what it needs to do. So it's protecting, you know, that herb to where it'll have, it'll get into the body to where it's not being ripped apart to where a lot of supplements you take in, they're just getting ripped apart right from the stomach. And that has a lot to do with like, the whole thing around probiotics, right? You take a probiotic in, it's getting ripped apart in the stomach acid. So that's that same, that same concept, that same idea. And that still happens with supplements, right? So it's not, it's not really talked about a whole lot. So that's what we mean by, about protecting the product is that it's going to be able to go in and get it, do its job that we assigned it to do. So it's going to go in and bind, restore, and direct. So it, and not only that, it's able to protect the tissue where chelation has occurred. So we, we don't say this on the supplement itself, but you just need to know that humic and fulvic acids are the strongest known chelators of science. So as a supplement company, no supplement company is allowed to say they're a chelating agent, right? So that's all I can say on that. So I move on now to that question gets brought up about liposomes. So it's like, well, why don't you use liposomal technology in your products? I think everybody's doing that now. It's like, every, you know, it's like it's supposed to be like the, the next biggest, greatest thing, right? And I would tend to agree. And quite frankly, there is times where I, I use liposomal myself in certain products. Like I love like liposomal vitamin C, for instance, because I can high dose vitamin C if I want to. And they don't, I won't have that side effect of, you know, giving somebody the runs and th that aspect of it. But where we have seen uh, clinically is that our products work even better than liposomal technology. And Jeff has the science background to, to prove that because we've just seen it happen clinically. But also he has said, if he felt liposomal technology was superior to our, our carbon technology, he would have used it, but he feels it's not. So, so he, he's saying it's better that, that the carbon technology is better than liposomal. Yes. And well, let me ex explain a little How bit. How cool but, is that? Like, so, and then why? So liposome, one thing, um, is required to have that lipid bilayer on the cell membrane, right? You got that lipid bilayer, which I'm sure you know well about. And so you have those liposomes, right, that are basically emulsified fat that they bring in a product, whether it's vitamin C or glutathione or whatever it is, and then they put it into the liposome, emulsify it, mm -hmm. or in, with, rather put it into the, usually it's a lecithin type of, formula and then they emulsify it to try to get it into the cell. Well, it can still have even as good, I mean, I like, I think liposomal technology has its place, 
Yeah. Um, but it's still a large molecule, comparatively speaking, to our carbons. And so it still has to enter the cell through that lipid bilayer. And liposomes don't have pH. Basically, it's a neutral, almost like a neutral. There is no pH really assigned to fat, to liposomes. There's no pH there. So our carbon technology uses pH to enter the cell. And they'll say, well, is it using the lipid bilayer? To no, it's not. So it's like, okay, so then how, how are you getting into the cell? And how you know, efficient is that? So well, carbon, uh, I, I got lost here. Liposomal don't have a pH. Right. But the carbon uses... PH. Yeah, uses pH as well. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. To get so, into the cell. Yep, to get into the cell and how it, so and how it does that. So the pH is high energy, right? And so Jeff explains it this way, and I thought it was really interesting how he, his analogy of it was, is that you think of it as a spirit, or he termed it as Casper the friendly ghost, to where it just goes through the, like Casper goes through the wall, because like, it, right. it can. It, it just goes through the wall. That's part of the technology, which that just sets it apart right there from the liposomal technology. So, and that being said, that we very rarely in clinic in use, um, Dr. Todd very rarely will bring in a liposomal glutathione. For one, he doesn't like to bring it in externally anyway, because the body still needs to, well, once it gets in the cell, it gets into the body and get in fact, got to get past the stomach wall and all that other stuff. It's got to break it down into amino acid. It still has to break it down. So, our philosophy here with CellCore is we want to try to, and um, we're very effective at doing it, is um, recycle glutathione is what we do. Is that, that's our job is that we, there's a lot of, in our formulations, there's a lot of our products that have, that are in there, the formulas are there to recycle glutathione. So we've just, we, it's more efficient to recycle glutathione. You don't need to bring in these expensive liposomal glutathione, which questionably I've tried it myself. I've tried it on other clients and patients, and even some, a lot of my colleagues will say the same thing. They've really never seen the big benefits that they claim liposomal, like especially glutathione, yeah. is primarily what I'm talking about here, is supposed to get with people. It, we just don't see that happen. I don't know. Have you seen that happen with any? Have you worked with liposomal glutathione at all? No, I I have a I have a doctor that I work with that. He developed, um, he has a compounding, uh, he works with a compounding pharmacy and I've used his uh, glutathione with my, when I was developed cancer and was trying to work with my liver support and everything like that. And I took his prescription from it. It's, he developed it uh, and worked with it. But I can't say that I physically noticed any difference with it. I did it because he told me I needed it. And there was no way to evidentially say whether it did what it was supposed to do or not so i don't but but i i believe what you're saying just because of the science behind it and um you know how i've worked in the past with things right so, so we try to re we try to recycle glutathione is what we're trying to do right to just do that whole you know you got that the you still got it like i said it's still got a if you bring in glutathione, the body is still got to try to break down those amino, yeah. acids, amino acids, right? So it's, it's, it's more expensive. It's more expensive of a process on the body to try to do that than the recycle. So, yeah. so that's basically the takeaway there that I want. So that's our bioactive um, carbon technology right there in a nutshell is, you know, yeah. is what it's doing. You know, it, it's going in there. It's, it has the high energy to bind down the stuff, get it out of the body. It has the ability to restore um, and repair anything behind rather than just trying to rip out a toxin and get it out of the body. So, you know, it protects that tissue where chelation has occurred, right? So all that, all those things combined, you know, and the fact that it's, you know, you have increased patient compliance that you can take it with supplements and foods, all these things, it's just really quite phenomenal of how it's become quite a, if you go on, the, you know, people go on the internet and they look at this and everybody's doing binders now and they're doing their offshoots of stuff and they're, they're doing all this stuff but when you listen to what you're saying and you hear and see what they've done you know if you've got any kind of awareness of it at all you're gonna see why this is so much 
so important and why you want to do it with these products because I just, it's so exciting. Yeah, this truly is next gen to me to where a lot of people are still, you know, we've, we've definitely have taken liposomal technology and put it on the shelf, on the back seat, on the back burner. It still has its place by all means, you know, in certain things. But I, I think there's definitely in ways, especially when it comes to detoxification of the body, carbon technology is just so superior, right? So Yeah, well, I would never have believed it. I, you know, I never really understood it. I, you know, I, I had people use, they always call about the diatomaceous earth and all this and, you know, carbon, all, uh, all that stuff. And I just like out here, but this makes really good sense to me. So Yeah, and so since you brought that up about the, the carbons, one thing I didn't I kind of didn't go over um, is this the fact about charcoal, right? We talk about activated charcoal, right? I always like to bring oh, this everybody, up. Everybody, God damn yeah. it. Yeah, it's not activated, first of all. It's a spent fuel. They, in order to make it so-called activated to be able to absorb a toxin, and it does do it, quite frankly, the charcoal does work. I mean, it does, it has its place. Well, it can help you with food poisoning. Can, but like I said, it's de it depletes the body. It depletes the body. So you have to fight. So you've got to, if you did a charcoal, you can't stay on it indefinitely like our carbons. Um, so you have to cycle the product. So you'd be on it, be off of it, try to remineralize your body, try to bring all the nutrients in, do all this stuff. Um, and then not only that, the, car the carbon that it is, it's more of an ionic carbon to where it can get knocked off. And that's what I was alluding to earlier. And there's not enough, think of it as seats on a bus. That fuel, when they burn that charcoal, they're expending, expelling some of that energy from it to now the seats on the bus are taken up because they spent that fuel. Our carbon technology, all the seats on the bus are available, right? So just Ooh, another, I like that. yeah, right? So just to kind of paint that, paint that picture. So thank you for about bringing up the, the uh, the binders there so it kind of reminded me about the carbon the act so-called activated charcoal which really isn't activated today it's a spent fuel is what it is so all right so moving on here into the phases here we'll move right along we have phase one with which is our energy and drainage phase and i'll get into each product and i have this written on the screen here to remind me because people will always ask you know you know yes these carbons is what these make these products different otherwise we would just be another supplement but also each phase of our protocol can really be called a leaky gut protocol or phase because we're addressing the causation of leaky gut each step of the way. Yeah. And our Tudka Plus and Biotoxin Binder are like at the head front of doing that, addressing that causation. So when I talk about causation, people are like, well, what do you mean? I mean, it's like, I'm usually, they're usually thinking of things like bringing in marshmallow root and all these different things to heal the gut, but what about the causation? So this is why a lot of times leaky gut protocols fail or takes a long time is because they haven't really treated the source. You know, I mean, there's things like glyphosate and toxins and parasites and all these things that open up these tight junctions and everything. And so if you don't get to the causation, you're just wasting your time. So people will often ask me, it's like, do I need to do a leaky gut program before, during, after? How does that work? It's like, hey, you can do it during for sure. And again, we're not coming in to say we've, we're the end all be all to every step or facet that you might want to bring in. If you have um, other leaky gut products, I have mine, you might have yours that you like to bring in to help heal and seal the gut as you're moving through. But we just need to be sure that we're removing the causation, right? That's what we do so well. So by all means, we advocate people bringing in but you can't um, fix the gut. This is why that's the last place I go, because you can't fix the gut no matter what. You take the foam off the beer, you get somebody sim asymptomatic relief, but you're not fixing the cause of why the gut's leaking. Yep. yep. So that's where yeah. I buy. Yep. So that's what we come in and do, detoxify, clean up that white noise, right? Yeah. To, to where now, that, well, like I said earlier, to whatever programs or protocols that you implemented in your clinic to help with leaky gut, hey, bring it in by all means. We're not the end all be all. We do detoxification really well, and that's our wheelhouse. Yeah. Will, we ha will we have a product that might do that in the future? Possibly. Uh, um, you but, might. you know, so, but anyway, so yeah. um, that's the whole thing about the leaky gut, because I get asked that a lot. So I think that was a good to bring in. So I'm going to talk about here about the Mito ATP up front. So we have the Mito ATP is a polysaccharide base, which is a sugar. 
And quite often people say, well, why are you using a polysaccharide? And so first of all, talk about the cell-to-cell communication that polysaccharides do. That's their job. It's, we really get that cell-to-cell communication happens with polysaccharides. So that's why we've chosen that base to with the carbon, the carbon technologies on all our products, um, except for one, and that'll be the para one that the carbon technology isn't in, and some of the tinctures, of course, the alcohol tinctures. But, but for the most part, all of our products contain the carbon technology in some form, right? And this form here is the polysaccharides, and the mineral has the polysaccharide too, but I'm going to focus on the, the mito bit. So with the mito, we're using that base with the polysaccharides to establish that cell-to-cell communication to where, and how the mito works, they'll ask is like, is this like a, an herbal drink or, you know, it's where I get that jittery, you know, trying to, you know, like a caffeine type of feeling type of thing. And I go, no, that's altogether a different thing that what this mito is doing. We're not pouring gas on the fire or fuel on the fire to where you get that flame up and then a flame out and then they crash. That's not what my, Mito here is about at all. We're here, you can think of Mito as like adding logs to the fire, to where we're building up the mitochondria, flexing their muscles, making them bigger and stronger. And how we do that, part of it is with, we're addressing the deuterium in the cell, in the mitochondria. We're reducing deuterium, so Mito ATP ensures that the deuterium is being reduced in the cell. So it's, Deuterium, if you have high levels of deuterium in the body and in the cell and the mitochondria, it breaks nanomotors. And the thing about nanomotors, because they're spinning like crazy, right? The thing about nanomotors is there's no slowing down. You don't slow down a nanomotor. Either it's working efficiently, all full on, or it's broken. So it's critical, right? So one of the things that we want to do, we, we ensure that we reduce deuterium in the cell because mitochondria, what they do when those nanomotors, they actually produce water. So not only do they produce water, they're supposed to produce deuterium depleted water. So we just ensure that that deuterium levels are low, which will just help throughout this whole detoxification process. But also the mito product goes in and clears radioactive elements from the cell and powers up the drainage funnel. So yes, it goes in and helps the radioactive elements from that cell if there is anything there. So that's really quite interesting to be got, being brought up is that because normally when somebody takes mito ATP, they don't feel that jittery type of thing. It's just like coming, waking up from a good nap, right? you just have that brain, that brain clarity kind of thing going. You're not that jittery type of thing. It's just all of a sudden you just have that clarity. So if you don't have that clarity or that kind of like kind of an energy energy type feeling and you do get fatigued on mito ATP, that's because what I just mentioned about the radioactive elements in there. It's going in and grabbing on some of those radioactive elements and stirring them up a bit. And so you might be going a little bit too fast. So that's where you would have to maybe dose down. And if you're stuck there for too long of a time, that's a time to where we've seen quite a few number of practitioners who will take a couple of days, two, three days, and high dose the product, like when I say high dose, I would be like five, six dropper folds a couple of times a day uh, for two to three days and push through that as a test to see if that helps. There could be other radioactive elements going on or there could be other situations going on with the body, but that, this is only something I would have somebody do if they weren't able to get past a couple of drops or four, they were stuck on four or five drops of the mito ATP for some time and it caused them fatigue. Normally it doesn't and a lot of people it doesn't cause fatigue. But of those who have high amounts of radiation, I was one of them, tested high for radiation, and I actually it didn't, I didn't feel that kind of same benefit everybody else was feeling. And I high dosed it, and it's, I seemed to push through that. And so now I just take my regular you know, one or two dropper fulls you know, a couple of times a day, and I'm good with it. So it's just really interesting how that works. So um, that's, that's the um, Mito ATP product, pretty much is in a nutshell is what that's doing. Any questions on that? I mean, it's pretty... No. Okay. So I'll move over to the mineral product. The mineral product, again, is polysaccharide base. And what's interesting about the mineral product is people are going to say, well, I, I've got a mineral product. I'm using concentrated minerals, or I'm taking a sea salt, or I'm taking some other type of salt type of product out there, and there's a lot of them. So I'll say, it's like, okay, that's great. And we advocate bringing in additional minerals. Because uh, again, this mineral product isn't going to be necessarily the end-all be-all to really, if somebody is deficient, like has, if you do an HTMA test, her mineral analysis test, and you show there are four lows and they're really deficient in minerals, there's something else going on you need to look at. But 
That being said, is our mineral product going to be able to go in and bring in the minerals that it needs all in that kind of a situation? Probably not. You know, we, we again, here again, you know, we were coming in foundationally to clean up the cell and how the mineral product cleans. So we're not just coming in, bringing in minerals and we do have them in there, but we have to, we have to look at is how do we even know the minerals getting into the cell, right? So this mineral product, what's just is different from any other mineral product out there is it has, will go in and look at that cell and let's say, let's say we're talking copper, right? You say, let's say you had somebody do that HTMA test and terminal analysis and it comes back high copper. And that's when you look at that and they'll go, well, that's interesting. Anybody who knows studies HTMA and they know it's like when they look at that test, it doesn't discern whether that copper is high toxic copper or plant derived copper. There's no differentiation. So then it's like, that leaves you out like, well, then what do I do? How do I know? Well, <laughs> well, do I bring in copper or don't I? Well, we're typically told not to bring in copper, right? Because of the, you know, the zinc antagonist and all that other kind of things going on there. But there's going to be, so this product, what it does, it's so smart. That's where this intelligent adaptogen comes in to where it'll go in and grab, it'll see, okay, we've got high toxic copper. It's going to grab onto that copper get it out and with the copper that's in the mineral product or even if you supplement yourself it's going to help to bring in that additional copper the correct copper that it should have it it understands it it knows what what correct copper it's supposed to have the plant derived versus a toxic copper so that's what sets this mint basically that's the nutshell that's what sets the product apart from any other mineral product is the carbon that's in there and the ability to discern the toxic copper versus the plant derived copper and to be sure it gets in the cell to do that, right? Pretty like out there. I can kind of see how you're like taking all that in. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it down. Yeah, yeah. So that's what sets that part, uh, product apart, and it's a um, it's a high pH. It's it's a high pH product. So what's great about it's kind of a clinical pearl here with the mineral product is that it can be used in other aspects here, rather than just going in and discerning copper and, you know, and, and I, ta I talked about copper, but it's gonna do that with all the other minerals as well, right? So let's say somebody has um, a kidney issue function going on. Maybe they, it could even be kidney stones, right? Or they have that like, low filtration rate that maybe is high. We've seen people and they high dose the mineral product. And when I mean high dose, that's a half an ounce twice daily for six days. So you'll go through three bottles in six days, a half ounce, half ounce in the morning, half ounce at night, and it lowers that GFR rate in the kidney. So it can, it can break up, go in there and break things. Because for one, it's high pH. It's like a pH, I think, of between two and three, something like that. So that's kind of a nice clinical pearl to know what that mineral product will do more than just going in and detoxifying the cell for minerals, right? So there's other aspects and there's other things that can do topically and there's, which I can give you a handout on all that. But so that's the mineral product. So that's what that's doing there. So next I'll move over to the, over to the, to the left here, the inflammatory control. I'll talk about that. So the inflammatory control does what it's permanent, pretty much says there on the bottle controls inflammation. We're not snuffing out inflammation, right? Cause we do need inflammation to enact some of that immune response, right? So, we're not here to snuff it out, but aside from you know, the antioxidants that are in there to control inflammation, there's also some form formulated to where it's gonna address candida and yeast and mold to a certain aspect to where we're trying to get things off that NR NRF2 pathway, because mold likes to sit on that NRF2 pathway, right? But that's not its really the assigned purpose is to really address that. It does it a little bit. And as far as with the yeast and candida, it'll pull that back too, and as we know, if there's yeast and candida in the body, it's a result of something else, right? So we know that we're not trying to go after candida up front. It's just kind of like helps control those symptoms as people are going through the detoxification process because glyphosate is actually one that can cause candida to happen in the body, quite frankly, because of the, it blocks enzyme production. It just, Everybody just, eats that garbage every day. When yeah, I know, right? So the inflammatory control is there to pull back inflammation, right? So you know, and it addresses yeast and candida and the mold to a certain aspects. So that's what that's there for. Um, and it comes in here in phase one and then it goes away and then it comes back again at phase four to where that's just, this because it goes away doesn't mean you don't have to 
stop using it. And by all means, it's here just because we know in phase one and four is where we feel it's needed the most, where we see the most need to control inflammation. But by all means, you can bring it in anywhere. We're just trying to control costs and reduce the amount of supplements that somebody's trying to, you know. So now when you're, when you're working with phase one, what clinically, uh, and that's, I know how that is for the most people, because the people I see are violently sick. And, but what is the average time for the sickest person that you're dealing with? What yeah. phase one about yeah. how long? Thank you. I was just about to, yeah, I usually get that right, but I'll, I'll address that now. Okay. Is phase one is meant to be 30 days. Oh, okay. like we like to see a, a minimum of 30 days. Now we're laying this whole thing out in a linear fashion, but by all means, there's no linear right? When it comes to the human body, right? Everybody's different. So somebody might be 30 days, somebody else might be 45, somebody else might be 60, but we like to see a minimum of 30 days. Yeah. Um, and you as a clinician will know, you know, if that drainage is open and, you know, there's going to be signs there. To oh, know. I see. It's on here too. Yeah. 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 It should be on there. So, yeah. And, um, and I'll say each step of the way, each, when, how long each phase goes when we get to that point. But so, yeah, this phase is minim minimally 30 days is, um, to be addressed. So the next product here I'll talk about is the Tudka Plus. Okay. And the Tudka product here is a synthetic product. And you'll be like, whoa, wait a minute, I thought you were a natural company and all and that's like, that's true, we are, we try to be as natural as possible, but we had found with Tudka, Tudka is bile from animals. And we, when we sourced our Tudka initially in the beginning, we had troubles with it being clean, wasn't clean enough. It was, there was toxins, there was always something in it. We just couldn't find a clean source of Tudka to help support that. DNA you know. is like the actual Tudka itself then. Yeah, so yeah, it's synthetic. Yeah. It's, a, it's a synthetic Tudka, but it, we, we do, remember we do have the carbon technology involved. And when they got with the scientists, when Todd got with the scientists about design and said, can we come up with a uh, synthetic, you know, do something with Tudka, what can we do? And he said, we can make a synthetic one. In fact, when they didn't realize it at the time, but when they did, when they finished the product, it turns out that it's four to six times stronger than anything else on the market. And they call it plus because it's stronger part of it, but because it also has NAC and melatonin. And the NAC and melatonin in there is only in there as a driver. It's not in there in any therapeutic dose whatsoever. Nobody's going to feel any benefit or any difference from those it's just in there for a driver to make that product work the way we want it to. So that's the way, like, so when you see NAC and melatonin on it, don't freak out that, you know, hey, you know, it's not a sleep aid and, you know, it's not NAC in there as a precursor to glutathione or anything else like that. So, yeah, that's just part of the driver of the Tudka. So the Tudka is phenomenal in the fact that it helps bile, right? It helps that bile flow. It just helps get things, that bile moving through the gallbladder, all that stuff. And what's actually interesting about Tudka and bile production and some might not realize this or forgot, and I actually, I think we tend to forget, is that bile actually aids in digestion, right? So mm -hmm. that bile is part of the stomach. It aids in digestion to where it actually can help the enzymatic processes, you know, in that, in that digestion process, breaking down, you know, all amino acids and all that. It actually aids. And so I always often think, you know, glyphosate is a big issue here too, but, you know, which actually gets in the way of that whole enzymatic process as well. But it's like if somebody's low on hydrochloric acid, it's like a lot of times making sure that they have bile flow, good bile, is actually a key component of where the acid issue, I don't know if you've seen the same thing at all, Pam, but to where, you know, bile I has a lot. You wouldn't need to use that other than if you're using Tudka Plus, then you wouldn't have to do the, I can't think my brain. Hydrochloric acid? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you probably wouldn't have to use that. Right. Yeah. I don't we, use it typically that time we tend to find that. And so we always ask ourselves, it's like, okay, if the problem with hydrochloric acid, why is that? Right. There's something in the way. And, you know, it's a combination of a lot of different things, right? It's always not always, it's that perfect storm kind of thing going on. Glyphosate's a huge one. Right. So, which I will kind of get into a little bit later, but since I'm talking about the liver, glyphosate has been known to disrupt or get in the way of the enzymatic processes in the liver, right? So if you think about that for a minute, because I like, I spoke with somebody the other day that she was like working with somebody with her homo hormones 
and couldn't get the hormone value, you know, it's high estrogen levels and all these different things going on. And she tried everything under the sun, right? Except then when I, when I went to this, started explaining this and I told her about glyphosate and disrupting the enzymatic processes in the liver. And we know how much the liver, you know, and that has part of the, you know, phase one and phase two. I mean, because if, you know, you can bring in all these supplements for phase one and phase two, you can bring in a metagenics ultra clear and all that. But if you've got disruption going on in the liver to where it's not allowing those enzymatic processes to happen from glyphosate, you're not going to clear the liver, right? So that's what CellCore does. We come in to help ensure to get, make sure that those supplements that you do bring in, you know, ultra clear for metagenics or whatever else or any other enzyme to ensure that those enzymes and metagenics products and like that work. So, wish to, uh, you know, what really is, is bizarre to me is that hearing you say those things and doing the work that I've done for over 30 years now, it amazes me because I've never used hydrochloric acid and you see the enzyme I'm using. If you look at that, people would look at it and say, that's the dumbest thing next to whatever uh, that shouldn't do anything. But for me to be able to clear up somebody's, I must use the enzyme and ultra clear. I've tried. And now what I'm trying to accomplish is I've tried the Tudka Plus by itself, not understanding fully its purpose, but knowing that it does three phases instead of two. And I'm not able to do what I do with ultra clear based on, it has nothing to do with making people feel better, except that it does. I can't get anyone to tell me why I'm getting the results I get. This is why it's hard for me to, to you have a wonderful way of making this all sound like all this stuff, but when I see the application of it with my work, which is real truth, there's no whatever, and it's a real fact that if you, and you have to do it with product, you can't do it with food by itself that why not knowing some of this stuff that you're telling me and knowing the value of it, why those results are there. And it happens not just one person. It happens virtually with every single person that can take my protocol. Not one, not one person can walk in my office and I cannot physically make a difference. And that actually equates to them feeling better. Mm -hmm. and I'm not doing this, but right. So what I, I'm thinking, it doesn't so make sense to me. I don't, yeah. no so, one can give me an answer why that enzyme yeah. does what it's supposed to do. So, so, right. Let's talk into that a little bit. So let's, let's say, so you're bringing in, which maybe some people don't, or even the right enzyme, because there's all kinds of enzymes out there. Right. So yeah. I think you're, I think you happen to hit a couple of things right on the head that are working and you found it clinically that to work and but you don't really understand the processes behind it so i don't know why yeah right, right so what i'm thinking is happening is that you're bringing in that enzyme and you've got maybe the right combination with the you know, the phase one and phase two detoxification with metagenics does with that to where you're going in and what the glyphosate is coming yeah. in and disrupting those enzymes you're bringing in are probably helping that pathway work so i question i wonder if we addressed, come up and straight address, maybe because our HMET binder is what addresses glyphosate, I'm wondering if we were to direct, more directly address the glyphosate issue, would we have to be that reliant on that enzyme? I, I, no doubt it's a great enzyme. I agree. Okay. So I'm just wondering if we would need to use it in the amount that you're using it or, or at all, if we get the body to work. Like, because I asked myself, why do we have to bring in an enzyme, right? Why, why is that? Well, they, and that was, you know, the, the philosophy of that when I first learned about it was that if you cook or steam or anything, your food, but then yeah. that, that theory didn't work. The, the raw food. People that yeah. did raw food, yeah. people that food combined, right. they still had, not only did they have horrible, but it, so, what I've done, I've had to try to, all I know is, is that if I fix what I have, 
And if I veer out of that, because I do experiment with enzymes, people will send me enzymes. They want me to test it. They want me to work with it. And nothing, nothing in 30 years, nothing that I've tested across the board, whether it's Metagenics, Nature Sunshine, you name it, I've tested it that they've sent me, people send me stuff, will do what that little bitty enzyme does to clean it up. Now, my, my thing is I don't do functional medicine testing because people that come to me have already had all of that done. They come in with a portfolio about five, 10 inches deep, you know, full right. of stuff that they've had done. So why would I do that again? Why not? So I've quit doing it and I work with what their reality is. If their program has been more than 90 days, it should look a certain way. I don't care who you are, or what you're doing. If it doesn't do that, maybe you're better and maybe you're doing well, but I can take you and change what that physical aspect looks like within a 30-day element. Immediately change that, maybe not fix it all, but make a difference. I don't understand why that does that, but it does it on everybody. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you've, you've, you found something there, right? So that's great that you were able to. So, I don't, so, no, so it's no. some, definitely something to do with the enzyme. You're bringing in enzyme that for some reason the body's lacking and I'm thinking it's probably a lot to do. Maybe, you know, I can't say for certain, but you know, we do know the glyphosate definitely goes into, it goes in and disrupts the enzymatic processes in the liver. And also so. too, but I'm also doing what you said earlier. I'm using a binder. When I work with my first phase of people, when they come in, they've already done everything. They've done your functional medicine. They've done detox. They've done herbs. They've done all the crap that's ever that's out there. I don't get just normal people coming in. I get people that have been eight to 25 years. They come in, I see what they haven't done with their programs. And guess what it is? It's what we're talking about. Even with all the things that they're doing, I take with the enzyme, the ultra clear, using a binder and a probiotic to support. Um, and uh, that's it. I go in and use that format, and then I look for parasites and viral stuff. I then address it based on whether it's 30 days or it comes into the second phase. If I do that with what I've learned, it literally will take and transition that person, get them off of all their stuff, other than medicine or whatever, and I will change that platform not just on one, there's not a person that walks in my office. I can't do that too. No. So I'm addressing digestion. I'm addressing the liver. I'm addressing the bowel. I'm addressing, and I did work, I would work with the bowel with another company with a couple of things that aren't laxatives, but bowel tonics, but never found anything like the bowel mover. So what I'm saying is I'm really anxious with this because this, is what I believe in. I'm accomplishing what I'm doing. Don't really understand why I get the results, but the evidence is there. Right. My phone never stops ringing from That's people awesome. all over the country. Um, yeah. Well, and but, I think in time, over you know, adding this, bringing in what you know and what they've done and all their research, you know, maybe one day there'll be an answer for me to be yeah. able to understand. I don't, as long as I'm getting results, I'm okay. I right, never exactly. Yeah. Fully, yeah. But I, but I just love it because it works. Uh, I'll talk about now the bowel mover product, which that you've, you've oh. had some experience with, with clients and whatnot. So you know how well it works. But oh, the bowel, the bowel mover is, um, air, you know, Ayurvedic based. So it's a lot of, of that hold the Clark formula to where, you know, it does have the Saccharis sagrada in it, which is typically a habit forming herb, but in the formulation that we have it in and with our carbon technology, it's not, we tried it out clinically for years yeah. and it's not habit forming whatsoever. Uh -huh. um, and also we changed the formula to meet more modern day world stuff. So which needed to be done. So there is a little bit of anti-parasitic in there too. There's like some wormwood and stuff like that. So you know, it, is, it can be a little bit um, more of a hot um, product, I guess you could say, as far as, you know, somebody just bringing it in right up front. Some people could have a little bit of a reaction to it because it's going to try to get that peristalsis going. 
you know, going in. So people will sometimes have that a uh, little bit of a, they're not used to that. And they're like, oh, what's that ripping or cramping kind of a little bit of, you know, abdominal discomfort a little bit. And usually that resides, goes away within a couple of days, but they can just, yeah, just you know, the bell is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. So they just have to work up. So they'll just reduce and just work up to what they can tolerate. And then they get through that. So I love that stuff. Yeah, right. You've, 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 had, you've had quite a few number of people that really like it. So yeah, it just helps the bowels move. And aside from that, even in like my own experience with it, so is I had actually loose stools, right? A little bit loose on the loose side. I, would, I didn't have a problem with constipation whatsoever. So I thought I wouldn't need it. And I was expecting, well, let me be congruent. Let me try out the product. Let me see how it, so when I'm expecting, oh my gosh, I'm going to get diarrhea. You know, it's like, I'm just going to have the runs here. But to my surprise, as I started moving up, because I, I went slow and I gradually got up, my stools actually firmed up and I had better formed stool from it. So I always tell people, other clinicians and whatnot, just don't disregard it. If somebody says they're going two or three times a day, don't dis disregard the product because it can still help because we're addressing, remember it's got the carbons in there and it's addressing, it's preparing things for phase two. So because with the little bit of parasi antiparasitics in there, it's just getting the, you know, the colon and whatnot kind of ready for things to go on. And it does actually help that peristalsis, that MMC, you know, migrating motor complex to it's awesome stuff to, to, to work. So yeah, we love that product. So it's a great product. And you, it goes away after phase one, but by all means you can use it in any number. We just don't. I got help. patients that have said, don't ever get rid of that product. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a great product. So the next thing I'll talk about is the biotoxin binder. Okay. to where the biotoxin binder is one of our three binders. And it, yeah, I can kind of, I can kind of like, like a general purpose binder in a way, although it's, you know, maybe it might not be the right term, but it kind of gives you that idea. It's like, well, why do you have three binders? And it's like, are you just trying to sell product? It's like, no, we have a method to the madness, so to speak, to where we are addressing specific things at a specific time through the drainage funnel, through the phases, right? So, you know, one of those things that, you know, we're coming up with here is like, this addresses mold. This is, one, this is the mold product right here for addressing mold because it just it goes right after, you know, um, that NRF2 pathway. We try to get mold off that NRF2 pathway to open that up. And so it goes after other things like mycotoxins and endotoxins, uh, ammonia, sulfur, candida, you know, just fungal, you know, those kind of fungal things. You know, can be upfront, you know, when you're starting with somebody, a lot of these issues going on, ammonia, right? So... So that's why we have that there and it works, works really well. So somebody with mold, this is the, gonna be the product they're gonna be on throughout this whole time. So it's, it's our you know, biotoxin binder is the mold product per se. So yeah, yeah. So any questions on any of this nope. before I move on to the next phase? Yep, make it that. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just so excited I can't stand it. So the, that's great, I know, right? So we're so with speaking about the mold thing too, that we're actually going to come up later on here is that we're coming up with a couple of products or a product that's going to be addressing mold a little bit more specifically, like in the sinuses and all these different other things. So I'll talk about that a little bit more later too, too that addresses really some more severe mold. Yeah. No, I know people have it in their sinuses, in their ears, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So that, um, then that can actually be a mold spore. And spore remember product. that that um, also with that girl that I'm working with, that part of what almost killed her was all that kind of stuff, and that she's the one that had the also bacteria in her eyes. And oh my! Ears. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so phase two is now a 60-day process, meant to be for 60 days. Okay. okay. Um, phase three is 60 days as well, if you're, if you're writing it down. So phase two and phase three are meant to be 60 days each. Products from phase one come along for the ride, right? You see the, the minerals, the mito, the Tutka Plus, and the biotoxin binder. So if I didn't mention it earlier, the mineral product is also a drainage product. So I'd like to kind of throw that just to let people know it is actually, you know, it is a, it is a drain. It helps that drainage funnel as well. So that's another thing. Um, and it does, it does address a little bit of glyphosate up front there too. So the mineral product and the HMET binder are really like the kind of like one-two punch kind of thing when you're going after glyphosate. We love those two products together and I can talk into a little bit more of that later. But because just the, uh, what glyphosate does to minerals in the, in the joints, it displaces glycine. 
and copper. So I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end. So phase two here, right? Now we're bringing in the para one and the para two to where para one expands and becomes sticky in the colon. And it focuses, focuses on those parasites inside that GI tract, right? So it does expand in, in the colon. So that being said, it can be constipating. So people need to be sure they're adequate water intake when they're taking para one, all right? So that being said, also because it does expand and become sticky, if somebody has any type of incisions or anything or any resections or anything in, in the colon, then that you might want to be a little cautious with using it because if there's any restrictions or anything in that colon, that could be, cause, could be a potential cause of some backup, right? So it's good to know that up, up front So because it does expand. And so you think of Para-1 as a gut scrubber, kind of a sweep, like a broom. So it's our biofilm buster in the colon. So Para-1 is a biofilm buster in the colon. Okay. So that works in conjunction with Para-2 as far as being in the, in the colon too. Para-2 though will go a little bit more systemically but it is primarily is kind of focused in the, in the colon as well. So para one and para two are like more colon focused. It will go a little systemically, but not as much as our para three. Para three is definitely our systemic and more broad spectrum product, which I'll talk about more of that coming up. So that's what those two products come in here at this phase. And they, we usually bring it in in the morning, take that first thing on a morning before food where we feel the best effect, you know, with herbs, right? That's generally the, it's an hour before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you take it away. So the Para-1 product, you want to take it away from the binders. Right. In, any binder. Yeah. Because it, it will de it'll degrade the Para-1. It just thin it thins it out. It makes it less effective. So that's the only thing. It's not going to be any really contraindication. It's just not going to make Para-1 as effective. Right. So, effective. yeah. So, yeah, give it, a, give it at least an hour. So it's in... Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, why, that's what I like about the products is you can take Para-1, Para-2, first thing. You can take them together, first thing in the morning. And you take and, it the last thing before bedtime. Yeah, yeah, and you can do that too, yeah, in the morning and night kind of, yeah, exactly, yep, yeah. So then I'll move, so that's the, the Para products. Um, what they're going after is, is that is parasites, right, in the colon, and it does work really well. I mean, the Para-1 is like its flagship product that Dr. Todd Watts brought into the U.S., to use and that's what he's basically started the company from was the para one i'll move over now to the, the kidney and liver support where again the kidney and liver support yes it does has the ingredients like it's got the milk thistle and all these different things that you know liver support and all that kind of thing is supposed to have but again what makes this different than us than just being a supplement is the carbon technology that goes into it to where it's going to be addressing detoxification in the organ specifically, not just bringing in a nutrient and hopefully that it gets in to do that job, right? We're ensuring that we're coming in detoxifying those organs and allowing that nutrient and any repair work that needs to be done behind. So that's really what's to be said about the kidney and liver support. I mean, it's pretty straightforward there that we've even, actually we've even seen liver flukes be passed just with on the use of this product. And oh, it's, really? yeah, so it's interesting. And there's some, we have some other handouts and things like how we can use like our Tudka and our kidney and liver support and the lymphatic product that I haven't talked about yet, but you use those com in a combination, like four capsules of each of them. Like you can use it once or twice a day for, for each of those four capsules of each. And it's like a, a, a gallbladder flush, right? You know, the, whole, the old, oh, yeah. uh, old fashioned, now I call it. Oh is the, God, I hate that. Yeah. I right. The golf, the drink, the oil and the Epsom salt. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it, been there, done that, right? It's like, oh my gosh. So we have a, a much less evasive way now of doing it and it accomplishes the, and it's pretty effective, pretty effective. So, so just know that our products are pretty versatile and different things that we've kind of designed. We've come, come, come up with, um, even in coffee animals, we've used like the mineral and the oxygen product. So in which I'll talk about that next here is our oxygen product, which is very versatile. We call it the Swiss army knife of Cellcor and the fact that it's, it, it's versatile, right? It's, you can be used in a nebulizer. It can be used topically. It can be used intravenously. And then of course, internally, of course, that's the designed purpose of it, but it's just so versatile and it has like a pH of like one, right? I You're going like a paper on that. I think I saw it on the oxygen product. 
Um, that's, like what you're saying, the different usages of it? Oh, I did. I think I did send you that, a handout. Yeah. I think, yeah. I thought I saw it. I think it's in my folder. Yeah, yeah. I didn't pull it out. But yeah, so I, the, actually the oxygen product, the minerals, and the mito ATP, they're, those combination of those things can be used in different various aspects in different situations um, topically for the most part. Those three will be done, will be used together topically. Um, the oxygen product can be nebulized. So quite, there's quite a few number of people that use that nebulized and um, they've even will put some of the para three product in, in a nebulizer along with the oxygen to, um, to just do different things there with immunity function. But the, what's interesting too about the biomolecular oxygen is that it is actually a molecular hydrogen product as well. So if you've ever heard of those effervescent fizzy those tablets, you know, the effervescent, um, they, they fizz, you drop them in the water and it produces yeah, this molecular I hydrogen, and gives you like eight parts per million or whatever per, per yeah. tablet or two tablets or whatever I'm it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've tried it? No, not this one. I mean, I've, I've used the, what you're talking Oh, okay. You, yeah. So, so, yeah. So we don't have any literature as of yet, as far as how many parts per million of molecular hydrogen is in per drop or whatever, but we're supposed to be coming out, I think with something on that. And we're going to be changing the name, I think on this, I, th I think at some point, like calling it like hydro oxy hydro or something like that, because people say, what do you mean? It's molecular hydrogen. It doesn't even say anything about it on there. So yeah. Uh, you know, people don't believe us, but yeah, it is, it, it has definitely when we're talking about the ROS um, factors there that it, it, it's able to, you know, give or take, donate the oxygen or hydrogen, whatever it needs there. So it's, it's, it's very versatile in what it's doing there. You know, it's reactive oxygen species. So it's a great product, great product. And so another, and so why we introduce it here in phase two, and we highlight it here in phase two and not necessarily in phase one, it can be brought, used in phase one for sure. We're just trying to keep costs down, but we just know in phase two that we're, we're trying not to deplete the body of its essential oxygen reserves because these herbal formulations and this whole process actually require oxygen, right? So, you know, the oxygen product is just really required for this, this phase to really kickstart it to get, make sure the efficacy of it to work. So again, with um, this oxygen product being versatile, again, you can take not only our herbal tinctures, but other herbal tinctures and add oxygen to the whole bottle. And how that would, be, what it would look like is this, is that for every ounce of herbal tincture, you would add seven drops of the oxygen for every ounce of tincture, seven drops of oxygen, right? And what that does is it helps protect that, the herb because of the pH. And then, you know, so the stomach isn't ripping it apart when you take in that herb, that's part of it. And then it just helps the body with oxygen as well so because it is like i said it's like a ph1 right this product so it helps protect the herb so i won't necessarily do that with somebody you know, who's a sensitive client who i know up front they're already sensitive with products if if i have an herbal tincture even whether it be our tincture like para 3 or something i'm not going to have them just add the oxygen to the bottle right up front mm -hmm. i want them to try the product first without the oxygen because it could be a little bit too more potent for them because it's going to, be, you know, actually it's going to deliver it more. So I like to, we like to test the product out a little bit without the oxygen before we add oxygen to the bottle for some, especially somebody who's sensitive. So. Oh my goodness, Baba, this is so cool. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. 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 It's so cool. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not either, but the mineral product, I mentioned about the Para-1 product being the biofilm buster for the colon, right? Help that sweep the colon. But the biofilm buster systemically is our mineral product. So you can do more, more higher levels of the mineral product, plus a little, you can even add the oxygen to it, and that'll be like going after more systemic biofilms. Um, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, because of the low pH that it has. So, you know, the mineral product, I think, is like uh, somewhere between two and three, and the oxygen is like a pH of one. So um, it just goes in and just really, you know, helps with those biofilms just more systemically. So, yeah, some, some of the minerals along with the oxygen will be the biofilm buster. And the para-1 is biofilm buster for the bowels. That's that mimosa pudica seeds that people 
it, no, para one is our mimosa, mimosa pudica seed. <laughs> okay, let me ask you real quick. You just mentioned that. Um, the reason I heard about this company was because one of my patients, while I was working with her, uh, was quite ill and a mess, and she was not getting better. And so she started working with me, and I was able to change where she was. But she also was very intuitive as far as her own health. And, and she was working with Dr. D, but she found Mamusa Pudica in conjunction with me with her parasites and started using these pro her, your, your products and started passing jars I mean, a jar, i never seen anything like it, full of ropeworms, just, it was full, clear to the top. And I told her, I don't know what that is, but I said, send it to Raphael and have him test it. And he'll tell you what they are. Well, she had Ascaris in there. She had round, uh, regular round worm stuff, and she had lung parasites and stuff like that. And they were real worms, but. We finished up here with phase two. So and let's see how anything more that want to, okay. So, so phase three, let me move to phase three. So phase three now is going more whole body and immune support, you know, function. We're transitioning, you know, from gut to whole body here. And you'll notice once again, that a lot of the products come from, come along for the ride again, right? We continue to use the minerals, you know, the Mito ATP along with the para one, right? So then, but we replace para two now with para three. So which para oh, three now? Yeah. yeah. So para two goes away. And now just because it goes away doesn't mean it has to. Mm -hmm. By all means, you can still use para two here as well. It's just that we're just trying to keep costs down as Yeah, as I possible. and I have to with people. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So yeah. So if you feel that there is so if you feel like if the parasite is more in the colon, colon related, then yeah, there, by all means you can stick with para two, but just know that para three is going to go more systemically yeah. and more diverse, right? It's going to be more broad spectrum, right? So para-3 is, is, was designed to go after things like strongyloides, blasto, you know, blastocystis oh, hominis. Right. Yes, I, okay. I know that all too well. Okay, C. diff, right? Oh. Yeah, it, it designed to go after C. diff. Crypto, cryptosporidium. Yeah, I was going to say, I would use it for crypto for sure. Yep. And then just another very, you know, liver flukes and just other smaller microscopic, you know, parasites as well. So, okay. but that, that's really what it was designed. And Todd actually designed para three pretty much for himself because he had strongyloides and he needed something stronger to go after it because strongyloides can be really a bugger to get, to get rid of. It can take up to a year a lot of times. So just that life cycle that it has. It goes from the lungs up into the sinuses, the lungs, the sinuses, and does all this stuff. So, so now then also here in phase three, the next binder that comes in is the Vired Chem. So it would typically replace biotoxin binder, only that because we're not trying to bring in too many products, right? So if, like I said earlier, if somebody is dealing with mold, I would still want them still on the biotoxin binder here as we go into phase three, along with the Vired Chem. So with that being said, what Vired Chem is, is really three of our, all three of our binders. So it's one third of the biotoxin binder, one third of HMET, and one third of its own Vired Chem formula, formula right? So it would take three capsules of Vired Chem to equal one of the biotoxin binder. If you were traveling, you, you could just take the Vired Chem with you just to have one binder and, you know, cover all your bases there, right? So it, we, we can call that a found, like a foundation binder. Yeah, okay. So what it's, you know, and it, it's going after exactly that, you know, viruses, radiation, and chemicals. And so it all goes along with the reason of, you know, that order right, through the phases and the order that we like to go after things, because we know clinically to get the outcomes that we did in the certain amount of time that we want to get done in the least amount of time, is that we address that order. And it's like we go after parasites, and then we go after radiation, and then heavy metals kind of thing. That's the, if I wanted to break it down in three simple steps, that's the order that we want to try to go after things. Because we just have seen clinically and how we come, and this is, story behind that and how the Vired Chem came to even be was Heather, Dr. J's wife, 
had Lyme disease, right? And Todd was working with her and could only get so far. And he was like, it was really, it was like, this is strange. I haven't had this happen. Why is she cycling? Why I can get so far and then she relapses. And he looked into it, found a little bit more of her history and found out she was born in this radon belt back east in the Midwest, I believe. And so he was, that was interesting. He does muscle testing, right? And so he brought, and he found out, wow, she tested really high for radiation. He had, he made his vials up and, you know, like, wow, that's interesting. So he got with the chemist and that's how Virad Chem came to be. They developed a binder primarily for radiation. They included, you know, so viruses, viruses, retroviruses, chemicals, and radiation. So it's the, kind of like the foundation there. So yeah. it's interesting that, and he, so then once he used this product going after radiation, he made headway now with Heather, getting her through her line. So we know now that we can't make headway with certain things until we address them in a certain order. And I'll even, that'll be like lead, for example, you know, lead go, likes to go into the bones and, you know, you need a lot of time to do a provocation to even get it out into the bloodstream to be able to detect them. Uh, right the levels of lead, which is like horrible to do even to start with. So, but a lot of times people like, well, it's hard to get rid of lead. And a lot of times the reason it's hard to get rid of lead, well, because one, it is in the bone, but um, is because the radiation. So the, the lead is there to protect you from the radiation that you might have. Not, not all the time, right? But like just something to know clinically is that if you're having trouble to get rid of lead, one of the things you might want to look at is maybe a radio, radioactive component. Okay, going. so let me stop you there. With, with the radiation, now, I've had my leg radiated. Is that the kind of radiation? Yeah. I've had, uh, of course, I'm being x-rayed, and now I have to go through a skull and a toe. Um, uh, Contrast so dyes. Uh, yeah, I'm going, uh, yeah, I have to do that uh, just because I fell and uh, I got to make sure I didn't herniate a disc in my neck and all that kind of stuff. So, but I do know that the, uh, if it's this one, or maybe this is the one I used was extremely beneficial, but with the onsalt that I've had, I've been assaulted on every level with radiation, every kind of x-ray, keep having to do it, have to do all this stuff, that I had a black ring that was just black. I've never had it. And pure body works, but it's a very slower process and it doesn't make people sick, it, all that stuff. When I added whichever one this was, I think- The Vired Chem. Okay, when I added this, I just did my this last week and that black ring, ring is gone yep. now i've got to go through it again so uh but what i'm saying if that's the kind it does then it makes me feel better knowing that i yeah. i can now do it not be afraid and i can get it done and i've got something because whatever i did with that it finished the job right awesome so that's good that you're able to actually back that up you have the you have the, the resources to prove it to yourself that it did the job. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm all right. So that's cool for the future for anybody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if I didn't mention it, I think I mentioned it earlier, but phase three is 60 days. I think I did mention it. Yeah, this so is it, all right. It's meant to be 60 days. Yeah. Yeah. So, and just know when we say 60 days, you know, there's always, and it'll vary if you have yeah. they're sensitive and you have to slow it down. Yeah. But you need a full 60 days for whatever that looks like. Exactly. So, and also when you go to and buy each phase, if you buy it by the phase, the kits, they're uh, 30 days worth of product at the standard dosing. So, you know, we don't, we don't give you a 60 day product amount because, you know, maybe somebody needs a little bit more than 60 days, right? So then if they try to buy another phase three, then it'd be like, oh, now it's four, you know, so we just keep it 30. You would just need to know for phase two and phase three, you'd have to buy two um, packages or, you know, just do it incrementally. And, you know, as you're, you start the one, you know, start phase two the first month, you don't have to buy both of them at the same time, obviously. As you, toward, as you get towards the end of the month, then you get the next one. I'm real good at that. I'm, yeah. I'm because I'm so cost. Uh, that's why I don't have money. It's because I watch everybody else's money. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? I, but they're all used to that. And they, and I just love them because they just, they're just, they just do 
what they're supposed to do and I keep it where it's effective for them. So that's. So the, um, the next thing, yeah, no, I'm glad you do that. I mean, I do the same thing. I know, right. We're, you know, we've got that empathy thing going on there. So I, I, I totally hear you. So the, uh, the next thing I'll talk about here is the iodine. The bioactive yeah, product, I, iodine. yeah. I want to know why they're doing that. So iodine, right. So the, the big thing with iodine, iodine has got this bad rap, right. So yeah. where it's like, and rightfully so, because iodine isn't meant to be, that part of the problem is people tend to want to uh, high dose or mega dose iodine up front, and you can't. It, it's not, iodine just doesn't get into the cell that rapidly, like, for instance, like a vitamin D, and that's even questionable that people should even be high dosing vitamin D. That's a whole other thing. I don't want to go down well, that, that rabbit hole right now. That's but, not a good thing. Yeah, so exactly. So that's, but typically that's, it's just one known out there that people would high dose vitamin. So and you can get away with not going to be differently as far as like a TPO antibody, you know, and a thyroid storm kind of thing that you would see when somebody tries to high dose iodine like this, right? I'll get a lot of people that'll tell me it's like, cause this is a tablet, right? It's not liquid. And I'll say, well, I like Lugol's because it's a liquid. I'm like, well, wait on a second because it gets into the system quicker. I go, but wait a minute, iodine isn't supposed to be done that way to start with. And so and that's what you're, you're creating a thyroid storm. You're creating an issue, especially with somebody with Hashi's, that the body can't even absorb that. And the receptor sites might not even be open to start with. And on, but our ratios of our iodine to iodide is in the proper amount in this product. So it's just not iodine. It's iodine and iodide. Okay. Okay. So with our bioactive carbon attached to it, it separates this altogether from any type of iodine out there to where You've got halogens, right? So iodine is a halogen, right? So you know the other halogens are things like fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. So they like to attach onto that thyroid receptor sites as well. So and if that's the case, then iodine has a trouble getting in because those receptor sites aren't open, right? They're not able to you know take in that iodine. So what our product does and separates us from any type of I other iodine or anything else out there is it goes in and removes, detoxifies those halogens from the thyroid, pulls them out, does any repair or restorative work that all the, those carbons do, and bring in that iodine that it's supposed to. Of course, it can't do that. I'm making it sound simplistic here, but you know that it just does, it's not doing it all at one time, right? It's, it can only do so much at a time, and it can take a year to really get those proper iodine ratios. But it's not doing it by overtaxing anything, which is right. important. It, yeah, right. But it's still, however, you still need to be cautious. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, so it's a tablet to where it's not being absorbed. It's not really time release, but it's a tablet to where it's not really being rapidly taken in. So it is a tablet. We find that tablet form is better than the liquid in this instance. And so, yes, if you took, if, if somebody had Hashimoto's, yeah. and if they took a tablet or two tablets straight up front, yeah, they're going to create a TPO antibody. They might have a thyroid storm. If that still could happen, Pam, okay. So okay. Like that, that's still, it's not going to prevent that. So you still need to be conscientious of that. And so in that type of a person, knowing that if you know they're that up front, you split the capsule, you would take you maybe even an eighth or a quarter of the capsule or tablet, it's a tablet, not a capsule, it's a tablet. And, <clears throat> and then every six to eight weeks, then you do, you know, you, you run your thyroid labs or whatever you want to do, however way you, you check that, just to monitor those TPO antibodies to see, and to, that'll be your gauge as far as to know when to increase the dosaging. So remember, when it comes to Hashimoto's, we advocate bringing in additional selenium, right, in order to keep those TPO antibodies under control. And once again, while our mineral product has some over 70 plant-derived minerals, we are not the end-all, be-all, as we come in as Cellcore foundationally to clean things up to ensure that when you do bring in additional support like selenium, zinc, or maybe even magnesium, that those products will then work, right? But now, we have- Let me ask you real quick while I'm thinking about it. So mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't have a thyroid, they've had it radiated or they've had it removed or whatever, would we still, would, there would be uh, no need? Because I, uh, I just, had, the reason I asked because it was just recent. So, uh, yeah. Uh, person they don't you know they had their thyroid destroyed by radiation and it's not functioning so they're on synthroid or 
or I've had people that have had their thyroid removed because of cancer. And so, you know, why would you, you wouldn't want to use this. So if, yeah, that would be important for me to know that because I get, really strange things that happen in my practice with people. Oh, that's a great question, Pam. So my understanding of it is this. Now in the female, there are iodine receptors that are on ovarian and uterine tissues, as well as even in the breast tissue, right? So this is like the number one clinical consideration for fibrocystic breasts. That and also in like removing methyl uh, xanthanines that's like, a, that's in coffee, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's in that whole xanthanine, uh, I guess, group or, or family. So yes, everybody still needs iodine. Uh, iodine is needed for many purposes in the body. And if I remember correctly too, I think it's even had a lot to do with, in, with, to do with cancer, like in apoptosis. So I remember Dr. Brownstein has a book on iodine, and I think there's quite a few number of interesting facts all around iodine and just the different needs uh, and the purpose of iodine. So um, there's, I think there's just really a huge correlation there with cancer and apoptosis. So that's that, um, you know, an, it's still an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory actions that the iodine affects several molecular pathways that are part of differentiation and that ap apoptosis in the cells from what I, if I remember correctly. And then ongoing epidemiological evidence points to iodine's role in the prevention and treatment of cancers through these effects. So there's quite, I think we, there's a, even some articles that we have on the CellCore site um, talking about making sense of iodine supplements and five bonus benefits of iodine. So yeah, iodine, so you got these five benefits of iodine, like one is for energy, even if the thyroid is gone, it's still well known as a energizer because it's very effective in breaking down both carbohydrates and fat in the system. And um, then we have toxin removal. So it's very good about binding on the toxins and the ability to um, extend into the bacteria as well. So it's very useful in pulling out heavy metals such as mercury and lead out of the body in addition to antibacterial abilities. So then, you know, then of course the anti-cancer agent as well that I had mentioned that I'm pretty sure that's part of it too, to where um, it just allows that apoptosis to happen in that whole cell um, life function. Then we have juvenile cognitive development, that there's studies that have been around that that results in numerous adverse childhood physiological and cognitive deficiencies. So um, it helps with them for that. And then also, protection from radioactive material. But in, in essence, yes, iodine is still required even if somebody thyroid has been removed or eradicated or whatever the situation is there, right? The thing with the halogens and the virate cam with other radiations, they're kind of work in tandem there as far as the radioactive elements. So that's what's interesting about this phase is that we're just really hitting more of those, you know, halogens and radioactive elements here, right? Is clearing, helping set the, the, the stage for the next phase. So that's, okay. that's what I like about this phase. And then now we bring in the lymphatic support, which is kind of hidden there behind to where we're addressing that lymph. Okay. You got it? Okay. Yep. So the lymphatic support, because we're setting up the stage now coming up here in the next phase, phase four and five, where we're going to be addressing more of the uh, Lyme and company, those co-infections yep. that, um, you know, that can be stealth actually, and they love to hide out in the lymph and even in the joints. So, you know, we want, definitely want to support the lymph and quite interestingly enough, and I don't know why body was designed this way. Maybe you might have an answer is that, you know, why does the, why do we have a heart for our cardiovascular system when actually the lymph is probably has, it has more fluid than the cardiovascular system there, but there's no pump. There's no pump for the lymph. Oh, no, I just told that to somebody yesterday about the lymph. I said, you can't sit on your butt and expect it to work. I said, you got to make it move. Yeah. Isn't that <laughs> interesting? Does yeah. It Does it work like your circulation? <laughs> yeah. So it's rather interesting how that, so anyway, the lymph, so this product just really helps, you know, the drainage of the lymph system. Um, and there's, there's that whole glymphatic, I don't know if you've heard that term, the glymphatic, where it's draining, you know, the glymph system from the brain. Uh, yeah. down that, that drains at night so it helps you know it helps support all that whole process so that's phase three 
um, that, sets, that sets the groundwork up for the, um, and like I said, I think I did tell you it's 60 days, yeah. So, so, okay. so we go to phase four now. So phase four now is we're definitely going more, you know, um, systemic detox in the body. And it, you know, definitely more, you know, comprehensive system detox, I guess I could say that, you know, we're still controlling that, uh, that systemic inflammation and binding onto those environmental toxins. But at this point, we're also targeting, you know, things like, you know, heavy metal, lead, mercury, PCB, phthalates, and glyphosate, right? So that's what I love here about phase four, because it's the really only thing that's different here in this phase is the HMT binder. And I can really focus on it a little bit because all these other things we've already yeah. introduced to, right? You see inflammatory control now shows up again yeah, in phase four. That stuff. Okay. Just because phase four, generally, sometimes we'll see a little bit more inflammation because now we're really addressing those environmental toxins, the heavy metals, radiation, you know, and phase four is four to six months. Okay. Okay. It's meant to be four to six months. Then you can say five months, right? But four to six, I like to think of four to six. So okay. because it can just take that amount of time to really go through and remove you know, radiation and heavy metals and environmental toxins from the body. It can just take that, that long to do it. So, and it's interesting about the HMET and I'll, I'll, I'm going to really focus in here about glyphosate here, because this is our glyphosate product bar none, right? And we would love to say glyphosate right on the bottle product remover, whatever, but we'd be putting a target on our back against uh, Monsanto and well, you get uh, it removed real quick. Monsanto CIA, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so th that being said, the glyphosate can be, we can actually remove the glyphosate in the bloodstream circulating glyphosate within like a couple of weeks. Oh my. It, it's, it's, it, but it can take with this product, but it can take longer, a few months or even more to, when it goes into the organs in different places into the joints. Right. So that's why it takes, that's why this phase takes a little well, bit it's longer. Like, it's it, like an onion. You're unpeeling layers yeah. of junk that people have had for years and you know, you just peel it away. Yeah. And, and then the thing is too, we're constantly being exposed to glyphosate. It's, it's everywhere. Even in the organic foods, I swear to God, it, you know, it's in the rainwater. It's in the, it's, it's, you know, we're probably breathing it right now, you know, so. Yeah, and, and I just told that to somebody this morning, uh, you know, we were talking about what you just said. And I said, if you're not eating organic, and even if you are, I said, um, and you can go crazy with this stuff. Yeah. I said, but if you've got products that can help us live without being freaking nutcases. <laughs> right. I said, then. <laughs> Can go out to eat and you can have a pizza and a beer once in a while or whatever but I said it's what we do every day yeah but now we've got products that buffer and can help it not accumulate once we get rid of it but yeah. you don't want to be stupid either so right 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 yeah god we got this stuff to be able to help us live in this filthy world yeah basically I call it an 80 20 rule to where 80 percent of the time I'm eating clean and 20 percent I can cheat or you know yeah and I, do, I do 90 90 10 but I like the 80 20 better yeah, right <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly I like that I think I'm going to start using that I like yeah. that better <laughs> yeah yeah so the um the thing with the, so the glyphosate, so yeah, it can take that long to get rid of the body. And so here's the thing with the glyphosate. I mentioned it earlier about the glyphosate disrupting the enzymatic processes in the liver. And we had that discussion about, you know, why things, yeah. hormones might not be clearing and all that kind of thing. And, but the other aspect of it is too, is the joints, the collagen. So we have found a lot of the chiropractors in our group that do adjustments on athletes. They work with a lot of ath different athletes, right? And so they'll have an athlete come in and they do an adjustment on the athlete and the adjustments aren't holding anymore like they used to. And each year it gets worse and worse and worse. And they've been noticing this. It's like, what's going on? So this one great chiropractor in, in the Midwest here that actually works with us in Selcor found out that he attributed it to glyphosate. It was kind of a, kind of a lengthy process how he figured it out, but to glyphosate is actually displacing glycine and copper in the joints, in that triple helix, in the collagen there. So it's displacing the, you know, the glycine, that amino acid there, and then the copper. So he will actually bring in, you know, the amino acids and glycine and even some, you know, small amounts of copper. And we're told not to bring in copper, but this is where, like, he loves using the mineral product in the HMET with these people, with these athletes. 
to where he can make sure that we're getting the, you know, the, the, the glyphosate out of the joints and bringing in the right copper. And he might even bring in some additional copper, small amounts. It's primarily with athletes because they're burning through minerals and stuff anyway, right? So uh, might be a little bit different for the everyday person. But so he, he, he has just found that within four to six months, those joints are now getting more flexible. They're not stiff. The, 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 his adjustments are starting to hold. So he, his go-to thing here is the HMET and the mineral Tactica. product with those people using those in combination just to be sure that he's getting the proper copper in the joint, right, and, and doing that. In fact, he's even talked to surgeons because he would like, and he who was somebody who had like a, a knee replacement or whatever needed to be done, they would go in there and say, like the surgeon would tell him, it's like, I'd go in there and the collagen in that joint is just like brittle. It's just like almost falling apart. That's what the glyphosate's doing. Is that's how bad, how much, how destructive this stuff is, right? I am excited because I do believe that this is an awesome, awesome agenda to what I'm doing, not only for myself but for others too. So, so glyphosate, we've just known that it it displaces the glycine copper, which I mentioned, and I get also you know manganese, it'll do that as well. So the like I said, the doctor he likes to use it, the HMET the minerals, and I'll even, as far as studying, I forgot to say, the Tudka. So he likes to use those three, particularly when we're dealing with a glyphosate issue. So the Tudka, HMT, and minerals are going to be the trio, I guess you could say, to use at that. So the thing with glyphosate, too, is it also creates ammonia in the brain. Um, so ammonia is not always due to parasites. So we've there's a correlation there that we found with that as well. So I'm, I'm not sure the mechanics behind that or the process of why that is technically, but I just was told that information a little bit the other day. Glyphosate also disrupts the microbiome, if you can imagine that. So that relate, that you know can be related to candida overgrowth in itself. So, yeah. so there's a lot there's a lot to play with glyphosate that really, oh my gosh, it's just one it's a bugger, right? So yeah. So anyway, that HMET product is like the product, a B glyphosate product right there. So I will move on over to phase five. Now, just so you know, phase five and four are meant to work concurrently, okay? So it's like, well, why do you have them in separate phases? Like, well, because they can be, you can use phase five separately, that's why, basically. So phase five can be brought in early, and I'll explain that a little bit more here. So just like para three can be brought in early if you wanted, but you just have to be smart. My job here to going through this is I want you to understand and master this process of understanding it so yeah. then you can come in and break the rules like a magician so to speak yeah. if so you, where, you can do it with uh, yeah what i do is i love learn and get it and then you can adapt you, yeah adapt it to however yeah. so we lay this protocol i mean this is a great protocol for somebody who's new to the industry who doesn't have a protocol in place they can just start out me today and be like they have something turnkey they can start with somebody on and so, but those of us that have been doing it for decades, you've got things set in place. And I mentioned that earlier to where, you know, we're not telling you to replace your whole protocol with what we have. If you want to take bits and pieces of this and, and fine tune it to your protocol, then that's fine. But just know that if you experience any situations with your protocol versus what we're trying to do, then there might be a reason. Maybe you're missing part of the funnel or something in the order. You're not, you're, you know, maybe you went after the heavy metals before you went after the parasite. You know, these things, as long as you understand that, then you're able to piecemeal this program if you want it for those who are who have more time under their belt and understand what they're doing, this whole process, and don't have anything going. But somebody coming new in, you know, new chiropractors, you know, somebody who's just graduated from chiropractic school or, you know, functional medicine people, this is a great turnkey product, you know, yeah, protocol nice. for them. So, but anyway, so let me talk about phase five. So phase five here is meant to be used one product at a time here. So like from what I mean by that in the first month of phase four, you would use a bottle of bore. So you start with bore, and this is our lime product. If I mention that, this is our lime and company product line, right? So we're addressing those hidden stealth pathogens. So we're just coming in here that maybe somebody isn't a lime quote patient type of thing who comes to you, doesn't even think he has lime but you just want to go through this just to cover the basics, right? Just to be sure we're, we're because it, they're stealth pathogens. Sometimes they're, they're very hard to detect. Um, we've had people go on at one of the products and all of a sudden they feel 
you know, joint pain. It's like, we're because it's going after that. So we just like to bring it in here to ensure that we're covering, getting, getting at everything. And by all means, just like the whole protocol is here, you don't have to follow every step of the protocol. You don't have to do phase five if somebody doesn't want to do phase five. We suggest it because we're just, we just know how Lyme is. It can just be, you know, spell pathogen. A lot of these pro- I mean, and when I say Lyme, I mean, we have co-infections too. So there's a lot of things that go along with Lyme, I'm sure you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, we would start with the first month with bore and we finish the bottle and we titrate up. You know, you go slow, a couple of drops, and then you titrate up to two teaspoon till the bottle's gone. So it could take them the whole month depending on how slow they go, but other times they might take them only 14 days to get through that whole bottle. And that's fine, it doesn't matter. But we do like to give them a little bit of a break. So if it did take them the, a whole month, we'd like to give them a little bit of a break before the second month and we start on the next bottle, just to give the body, that, the liver a little bit of time to recover, right? So the second month, and we'd start with Bart, which is Bartonella, and the same thing. You start out slow, work up to two teaspoons. Third month, you go with tab, same thing, up to work up to two teaspoon. Fourth month is in, and then is boost. So um, right now we don't have bab is coming out um, pretty soon. Until then, you boost replaces bab right now. The, the formulation is that close to where it still will, will address babesia. Bab is babesia, right? Yes. Um, so, but the babesia product is really more designed for it. So but just know that the boost will work as a, re- as a replacement for it. So, so. Then you'll see here we got the lymphatic support to really emphasize the lymph system because again, Lyme and Company loves to hide in the lymph and as well as the joints and those the collagen there and especially the glyphosate really destroys destroys that collagen. So the Lyme and Company will love to go in there. So we find the joints are really a haven for Lyme and Company as well. So now then you'll ask, it's like, okay, so what if somebody does come to me with Lyme? How do I do I have them wait through this whole protocol? to get to this phase to even, I go, no, you don't, that's ridiculous, that's absurd, right? So we want to give some early wins early, some, some relief with them, but just know because of now what I've just explained to you, I've kind of broken my rules of the order by saying that, right? And so it's like, yes, we can bring it in early, we can microdose, and I'll say bring it in, but not like what I just told you, we can bring it in early, microdose them to where they're gonna work up to the, the dosage that we want them to. So if I know somebody, for example, if somebody comes into you with Lyme and the first, you start with phase one, you get them up on the program, make sure they're stable, right? Then you can start introducing these products in the way that we generally would do it with somebody with a Lyme patient is you just, it's just not one bottle like I told you here for somebody who doesn't have Lyme. You combine all of these bottles together at one time. And in doing so, you would microdose like five drops of each product in its same glass, five drops, you start out slow, you work up to them, and then you just get work up to one teaspoon rather than two, because when you combine all the products, you are now able to reduce it by like 70%, it's approximate, because there's a lot of crossover in the products. So you don't need to use the full two teaspoon, you would individually, right? Okay, so uh, that's my my little 16 year old um we've already uh i worked with her when she came and she's the one i told you about that said she didn't have limes and i said well we'll treat with what i see uh if you've tested and you don't want to do that again i said then we'll work with what i see she had parasites she did Raphael's program for three months and we'd done the we done the cleanse, the lymph, the you know all the stuff that I do with what I know to do. And then she did Raphael's program, and now she's in a wheelchair. She's I hadn't heard from them. Um, I didn't track her to keep finding out because they uh, they were doing the program with Raphael, and I received a letter from the grandmother, and now they had her tested again. And she's the one that they're not sure, but there's some markers that say that she's possibly got it. I said, she has it. First of all, if my program and Raphael's program did not eradicate this, then she's got Lyme's disease. And she has all the symptoms of Lyme's. So would I, she's she's now um, 
in a wheelchair. She can't really do a lot of walking. So they called me again and they said, we really want to work with you. Uh, and I told them I would try to see what this program is and then start working with her. So would I start with phase one with her again and just do that for 30 days to lay the groundwork? And then the next 30 days, because uh, we've already we've already tested her, the parasites are not there that are present, that were present at the time, they're gone. And um, that didn't make a difference in how she felt. Um, it didn't change anything as her, her system got more radical. So the Lyme's has got, she's probably got co-infections and all that. So would I, would I start with phase one and do phase one for 30 days just to, just to kind of doing something. She's doing some program now that she found online, her and her dad. And so I said, well, I won't work to, with you till you're done with that because it's done nothing for her. I said, finish up your program and then get back in touch with me and then I'll talk to you. Um, so when they finish it, then she's going to call me back. So phase one and then bring this protocol in. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So we always, the, the thing about <clears throat> this phase five is in, in, in our line protocol, what really sets the stage up for this lot phase five part of the protocol is that we did all this prep work ahead of time okay so right. that's uh, like i would say so like i i think i mentioned earlier about heather didn't make dr j's wife didn't make headway with lime until they what addressed what the radiation right yeah. mm -hmm. so so you got to remember that so so now that you know that like somebody with lime yes i can bring in these products early to give them some early wins for relief to see how we're doing, but we're not going to really get after that line wholeheartedly until we address those pathways and get things open and, and address right. things like radiation and heavy metals and anything else that may be lurking around. So it's very important. And the reason that makes this line protocol successful and work, and it works really well, is really the prep work ahead of time. If you do that yeah. prep work, yeah, okay. So yes, yeah, so the answer to your question is definitely Phase one, yes, absolutely. Let's get, let's get things working. Get, let's start doing that. We can get them some early relief early, you know, uh, well, she's early on. Really been, yeah, she's just, uh, she's beyond herself. And she's 16, for God's sake. She's yeah, a young bad, girl and you know, she's just yeah. tired of it. And yeah, let's give this person some hope, right? Some, yeah, some, yeah, restore their hope and help. So, so yeah, we'll, yeah, we start them out slow and give them some relief. But just know that when we get towards more through the end of the, you know, through phase three and four, then we'll be able to start hitting it harder once we get through phase four, right? Well, then we'll be able to go somebody like that. You would actually, you'll know as you start microdosing them all along the way with all the products together to whether you would know to whether to, once you get to phase five, if you, if you want to do individual products one at a month, which I probably is not going to be the case, but I'm just throwing that out there to let you know that, you know, have your own open mind here of how to do things, but I'm going to, it's probably going to be more like when you do get to phase five after phase four, you're going to be combining all three. You may even be going up to a, a, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half with all three or four products all at one time. But I was just, just I was trying to drive home that you can reduce the product by 70%. Yeah. Whereas if you were taking it by each one product individually, you can take two teaspoons, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, so you would definitely start with phase one with that person for sure, for sure. Yeah, you just can't expect to take this, these products alone by themselves to, to clear it out. Yeah, no. we have to address, because we have to have that lymph moving. We have, everything needs to be moving to clear these buggers out, right? You yeah. know, yeah, and the, and the binders, always be on a binder, always, always be on a binder. Okay, yeah. so then of course we have, there's, there's things like we have a full moon protocol and all these other things that people would do in phase five, like in the second month of phase four, they can do a full moon protocol, um, which I don't have a slide for that, but basically all you're doing is you're bringing in during the full moon, you're bringing in like para one, para two, you know, all these different para products and hitting it hard, punching it hard and pulling back during the full well, moon. And I'm excited about that because Raphael uh, is the first, I mean, I've always known about the full and new moon cycling and it's three months 
um, is the cycle. I've learned a lot from some of the top parasitologists in the world I've worked with and but you know, didn't have these products, but but used Raphael and still have, and I will always use Raphael um, in uh, in the beginning, probably maybe I'm not sure how that's going to work in the future. But uh, but we do three months and then we retest and then I check my work and and um, I find the activity still. And so anyhow, it's it's been a really good educational thing for me and him both. Yeah. But um, with this. Um, uh, it it gives evidence of how deep seated things are, so we can work with that concept of that full moon. And what's nice is is that if people do every six months, I tell it's like you deworm a dog and kids. I said now with the protocol, the full moon protocol. Um, you do it, people should do it every six months because you even get parasites from organic food. We don't get, the, we don't eat the parasites, we swallow the eggs. And there's one especially that's in broccoli. And I didn't know that, but I learned that from Raphael. I thought it was a European parasite. And he taught, <laughs> <laughs> he taught me that you get it from raw broccoli, not Europe. <laughs> wow. So, I've learned a lot from him, and he said they they lay their eggs in in the cauliflower and, and mainly in like in broccoli, and when you eat a lot of raw broccoli, um, you swallow the eggs. And of course, if a person's environment, I said, parasites are filthy. They love filth. They the dirtier you are internally, they're going to set up motels, hotels, and resorts. Mm -hmm. And then if you're eating incorrectly, they're going to have a Mardi Gras on the full and new moon, and so. You can literally track that emotionally and physically. I have people doing that now. And I've done it now for the last 10 years, especially working with Raphael, because that's how he works. And it's never failed. It's just hysterical what happens. So now with this protocol, they don't have to, once we clear that up, they can now do this on an ongoing basis because I don't care if you're eating out of an organic bar, you're gonna get parasites. Every day of our life, we're going to get parasites someplace. So now you don't have to let them build those motels and hotels because you've cleaned the filth up. There, we can now get a hold of them before they ever build those motels. So it works. And so this is really cool that they've got a full, you know, they've got the kit ready so they can just order the kit. Yeah. In fact, I'll just, let me just, I'll, let me just stop the share here and I'm going to go and share a different screen to show you, I got this little flip book here. That's a protocol guide that's turned into a flip book. So, you know, this is the roadmap, um, the drainage funnel, everything that we just talked about, prepare phase one. You know, Ooh, I like that. So phase two, just, it just goes, I'm gonna get to the full moon. I'm just showing you the book though. So phase three, the dosages, you know, um, products that work, all this. So, so we have the full moon protocol here, right? So. We've got this full moon protocol that you would typically introduce here in um, in this phase, you know, as, like the second month of phase four is when you typically do it. And there's different stages of this full moon protocol, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, according to so, right? Yeah, so you somebody, may, I, I'm just curious because Raphael's taught me that you treat according to the full and new moon cycles because that's how parasites cycle. Right. And so they do two, they do so many weeks on the, full moon and then they take a break and then they started on the new moon the last cycle and so I'm wondering if this kind of fits into that agenda because um, we've been able to clinically document the accuracy uh, me for him and and him for me knowing that my work is he said actually 100% accurate. He said, I've never been wrong yet. Yeah, so, so, so the only difference what you're saying and what this is, is that, and it very, could easily be tailored to what you just said. Um, yeah. we, we go per, just off the full moon. So that being said, you can still do the same thing using both full and new, new moon for sure. Yeah. There's no reason why you couldn't. I mean, I think that's a, actually, it sounds, I like that philosophy. That sounds great. Yeah, um, he has a book. Um, uh, 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 he doesn't, sell the book he oh, patients only get it but what he does with it 
it, I've become so educated from him. He tells the different parasites. Well, he's been doing it for 50 years. He's a medical doctor, but he, he's, uh, you know, he's, he doesn't really harp on diet and, and all this stuff that we do, you know, but he's really stinking good with what he does. And he designed the protocol for the, he did, was part of a research for the military and um, he saved lives. So, uh, you know, I met him in Chicago. I was so impressed with him. He came and met me in Florida and we got to be really good friends. And I've been working with him now for about 15 years. And I know that he does really good work because he creates the products with essential oils, but he's also taught me a lot. Uh, he's taught me mm -hmm. how to, how the real cycle is, not according to what we read. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this could be used in, in his protocol, like what he does with his stuff. Yep. And no, I, yeah, I think we can definitely cater that into that. I, I don't see a problem. I'd be, so then after we're done with this, then we have what we call optimi you know, like an optimization phase to where you would uh -huh. use you would these products every quarter kind of thing to just optimize, keep people in that state of health then, right? Going, okay. going forward. So, so th this would be our optimized um, now, where can we get this this little hoodie thing? What this book? Oh, yeah, actually, you have this. This every practitioner with Cellcore has not this flip book how it's designed like this, but you actually, I think I sent it to you. It's called the Protocol Guide. Yeah, um, I have that, but I like that. <laughs> well, I, yeah, this is this is an online thing. It's not you're not. I'm not able to download it and hand it out. Oh, well, I know it is kind of cool, huh? I know, right? I like this. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm so into stuff like this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so then that's the back page. So yeah, so it, yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's, you know, it just goes through. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's, just, it's called the Flipbook. You can, there's, it's a software program you just go to. I think it's flipbook.com or something or other. But yeah, so, so that's, yeah, so that's a process. So I'll just stop sharing that screen. I'll go back to the other one. Okay. And um, let's see, where was I at here? There we go. Okay, so that was yeah, so that was phase five, and I talked about the full moon protocol because that would be implemented along with the phase four as well. So now we're done with that. So I'm we're pretty much getting close to the end here, and this is really I'm just going to talk about a, a case study real quick, to where this is a typical case study, which you know I think as practitioners and patients, I just love seeing this kind of real world example. So and this is a patient that came from one of our practitioners back back east. And he, this, he did this comprehensive blood work on this new patient that came in and he ran these labs before the guy you know, went on the protocol, the, the foundational protocol, the cell core protocol, right? So, and the patient was dealing with type two diabetes, had some digestive issues, evidenced by the Prilosec, right? And he was on two different blood pressure hypertension medications, one for cholesterol and triglyceride. And then he also was diagnosed with hypothyroidism because he was on Synthroid here, which is just a typical case. This wasn't somebody had, you know, Lyme or anything really difficult. This is just your general population kind of thing, right? It's so, weird tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so he was a heavy smoker, right? Heavy drinker. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not that John Bano. So yeah, it's, um, and he had an overweight and with BMI was based on his height and weight was almost 28% body fat. So and this guy didn't go after anything specific with this gentleman. In fact, the only nutritional change that he made was a somewhat mod modified elimination diet, just limiting some complex carbohydrates, right? And so also because the client, what, guess what? Didn't want to do anything, any changes. And typical. Imagine that, right? So yeah, which we definitely find typical. So, so, but, but, so just following this foundational treatment and the, the, the doctor did this post lab panel and didn't address anything specific. And you can see here that most everything normalized and the patient himself made the decision prior to this panel to remove himself off the med his medications himself. Cause this, I don't think he was a licensed doc to be able to tell somebody, Hey, go after medication. Right? So you have to be careful with that. But, so the uh, so you can see here his blood pressure had come down and everything with the exception of some iron and some cholesterol and triglyceride issue, everything pretty much normalized. And he actually lost 23 pounds and 5% body fat in the process. Not even really trying per se. I mean, 
the guy, in fact, he quit smoking and he had a bottle. Oh, oh, okay, so this is the follow up, follow up on this, right? What was this is that he told the guy to stop drinking beer and he, he did, but he used wine instead. So, <laughs> which was actually worse. But then after a little bit more work with this guy, got him to stop smoking, got him to reduce his drinking and change his diet, and then things really cleared up. But this just goes to show that what could happen just foundationally without actually going in and like trying to target somebody's, like this guy was on Synthroid, right? Like really trying to target, oh, let's go after that, you know, yeah. that kind of an approach to where we just went in and cleaned up things, the homeostasis, just got things the baseline and got rid of the toxins and everything else in the body. So that just goes to show what this, yeah. you know, roadmap to health does, these life-changing yeah. results that can happen following this roadmap to health that's based on mitochondrial function right? And what can happen when they incorporate the power of the phases before they even get to the functional medicine work. So I hope this helps you get a little bit better understanding of how you'll be able to incorporate these power of the phases and the protocols in your clinical practice. Now, I always challenge my practitioners to become a product of the product. You know, I've been using the, the products with the limited patients that I've had now with COVID and not being able to work. But, um, so, you know, now I'll be working with uh, some of my really tough patients that are having some struggles like, and um, stuff. So I just, I'm going to, to me, I'm excited because I can see how I can use it in, you know, in with my program that I already have. And I'm going to be using it on me. Awesome. That's awesome. No, I, so uh, you mentioned the part about the spiritual emotional aspect which i think that can be so overlooked a lot of times to where i'm glad that you recognize that and you've done, done this work for so long that you understand that so that you notice when you started to incorporate that you started to feel better right so it's really interesting that tie that that it's not always biochemical work right you know we, a lot of times we need that spiritual aspect the emotional component there to really get to true healing a lot of times. But yeah, we do need those interventions of the biochemical as well. And it's sometimes it's that combination. 